Welcome Charger football fans to Lake Country. We are down south, not far from Lake Murray in Dixon, Oklahoma tonight, where tonight your Heritage Hall Chargers will face in week seven, the Dixon Comets who come in with a record of three and three. And as most of you know, the Chargers come in with a sparkling six and zero record and of course three and zero in the district. Um, 18 straight wins for the Chargers dating back to the beginning of last season. Uh, we lost to Clinton and then we haven't lost since. Uh, so it's been a while. I want to welcome in my broadcast partner, your assistant AD and head basketball coach, Dylan Sullivan. Welcome Dylan, I can't wait to do the game. Uh, so we're gonna apologize right up front guys. As you've stepped outside today, you know it's a classic windy Oklahoma day out of the south and uh, we're sitting up atop the uh, home uh, press box here in Dixon and it's it's great, it's a great setup. It's just we're outside and I'm sure you can hear the wind whistling uh, through the mic. So we'll try to fight that for you as best we can and, and, and hopefully it'll die down as the evening goes on. Um, Let's get right to it, Coach Sullivan. Our, fe our super prep feature player of the game, senior Ben Showalter. I see Ben, you know, and you, you see this better than I do, and you can take us through some things he's done, but I know this kid has transformed his, transformed his body in the last two years with some serious work in the weight room to be a major contributor here for the Chargers. Yeah, he has. It's been unbelievable. You know, you go in that weight room and a steady dose of Ben Showalter in the weight room. <laughs> um, and to be honest with you, he, you know, he came out to throw and track a couple years ago. He does his throwing, he gets the work in with air, but he always stays to run. Always stays to run. Yeah. Throwers don't need to run. That guy stays to work on his form, work on his speed, and just put himself in the position to, you know, be a feature player of a game. Well, it's a great story, and he's a what a great Charger. You know, his his mom mom obviously was a Charger and our head cheer coach as we speak, and she's across the way to watch Ben's senior year. And uh, you know, that's and and his dad Tommy was a great linebacker here uh, for the Chargers. So you know, we we see a lot of that uh, family affair, if you will, here at Heritage Hall. And uh, Ben's a great example of that. So it's good to, to have Ben as our super prep feature player of the game. Um, you know, really good linebacker. He's played all three of our spots in our odd stack, Coach. Uh, the we call the raw, the Lou, and then of course the Mike in the middle. And and I know Ben, and you know Ben, in our in our playoff run started a couple playoff games last year, and uh, afforded himself very well in those games. And those are the big ones. Yeah, he did. It, it was a huge time to step into uh, those playoff situations and and, and hop in there and. and be able to play at that level early on and set the tone for the rest of that state championship run. Well, and part of the part of the narrative here is that he does, he sets a great example for the younger guys. And as coaches, we know, and there's nothing better than words are good, right? It's it's good to hear the rah rah, but what's the best way that you set an example for the younger players? Actions, right? Action in, in that weight room and. Uh, don't do when it's when it's three sets of eight on the last one you don't do six exactly and right. uh, Ben's body and his work has proven that he has not missed a rep and uh, really really good to see Ben helping out on this team enjoying a great senior year here as the Chargers as usual continue to roll you know a couple just a quick background here on the two teams and we'll go to a quick break the Dixon Comets come in with a three and three record which is much much improved uh, by the Comets they won their first three and then got in a district play and it's, it's been a little tougher on them uh, they started out tough with Sulphur, Plainview, Marlowe back to back to back, and <laughs> it doesn't get any easier for them tonight no, with doesn't. the Chargers. But, you know, I think Dixon's had a couple of collars at meeting 0 and 10 in the last few years, and, and to go 3 and 3 so far this year is a great improvement led by Coach Matt Suffall in just his second season. So, you know, I, I appreciate guys as, as having done it myself to come to a small place where you, the, the players you have, is who you have right and to uh create a good product you know it's it's obvious dixon is taking great pride in their field tonight and i've never been to dixon and it's a beautiful view to the south you can almost see lake texoma up here and and uh but they've got a great looking track the field looks great and uh kudos to the comments for putting on a as a good host here to our number one chargers uh some numbers that look like mid sprints dylan uh number one in 3a until someone has can knock us off right, uh, right. in any poll you want to say. Coach Brett Berger, our good buddy, an 05 Charger uh, in his ninth season as head coach. And I say it all the time, but I mean, this is really, it's absurd. This is not a misprint. His career record is 107 and seven with, a, that's a winning percentage of a smooth 939. Um, Holy. And the Chargers have, are getting into rare air at, with eight football titles. Obviously most recently last, year versus Metro Christian out of UCO and uh, 24 district championships, nine straight. The Chargers have not lost a district game in over a decade. Um, so some crazy things uh, going on. We, we've got uh, 
61 fellas on our roster this year, which is wonderful. That's really high for us and a big led by 16 seniors. And then, you know, breaking it down, seven juniors and then 16 more sophomores and a large contingent of freshmen, 22. Uh, a lot of good things with that big class in freshmen that are freshmen. We're gonna take a quick break and, and come on back for the Joe Cooper uh, Auto Group Keys to Victory. But before that, when we come back, you can't have a Charger Vision telecast without a weather report from our man, college freshman Coulter, Coulter Gasky. Miller Tippins is an award-winning commercial construction company specializing in building relationships. Our mission is to improve the lives of the people we serve. Exceptional work requires an exceptional team. No matter the scale of your project, we are committed to delivering excellence from our owner-driven team with over 100 years of combined experience. Let us be your A-team. Miller Tippins, your champions of commercial construction. Hey guys, well, sorry I was unable to uh, make it to Dixon tonight. Uh, got a, a big chemistry test that I'm currently studying for, so I'm stuck here in Norman, but thanks to the power of this newfangled technology stuff, I am able to uh, still provide you with the weather report. Currently, we're looking at mid-70s at kickoff, and we'll eventually dip down into the low 70s as we get closer to the end of this game, and a constant wind out of the south at about 15 miles per hour, so... Once again, still getting just a little bit cooler. Why does winter seem like it's so close yet so far now? Guys, back to you. All right. Well, as usual, uh, Coulter had to, as you say, phone that weather report in. He's been coming back home and doing these games on the sidelines and giving his report and holding the camera, helping out with the Charger Vision crew. But tonight, Coulter duty calls. I, I'm hearing chemistry test possibly tomorrow, and, and he's in college now, and that's where he needs to be. But he, he still took a little time to help out with the weather report, and he was spot on. He said mid-70s, and my phone says 74 right now, Dylan, and uh, it is breezy. It is breezy. I'm not exactly sure what the wind chill is. You don't usually look at that in, in the 70s. It's you know, in the 70s, but, but tonight it's definitely lowering the temperature a little bit, especially up here at the top of the press box. You know, Steve, you said something before we went to break. 16 seniors. Yeah, yeah, and I, you, you just, like I said, off the air, when's the last time? I don't rem I don't know how many seniors that 15 team had my first year back and when I was still helping out uh, with, the, with the coaching and, and uh, a lot of seniors that year, but that's obviously uh, a peak number Absolutely. for us. We're used to more like eight to 10 is right. a good number. Right. And, but 16 is, you know, the more the merrier, obviously, when it comes to that. Um, Let's check about our Joe Cooper Auto Group keys to victory here. Um, like I said, we'll get into it during the telecast. So many people help out, but Joe Cooper, a big one. Comet keys, uh, you know, they're going to run the ball about 90% of the time. Um, go the extra mile on special teams. Much improved is one of the areas the Comets are improved. Uh, reflecting this 3-3 three and three record is that they are improved on special teams to, thanks to Coach Matt Soffel. And then uh, I'm, I'm seeing chatty offensive line, so you can read to that in what you will. Uh, let's be smart down there and uh, take care of our business. And uh, as we always say in sports, the second man gets caught. So run the play and get back to the huddle, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> and, and, you know, our, our guys along the front on both sides of the ball, we've been there before, right? Absolutely. Great point. We're so mature and – and uh, so much, so many snaps at the varsity level by these guys. As, as you look at our captains from, from the screen left to right, I'm looking at uh, Jordan Harris, quarterback Andy Bass, Rashad Smith, Jack Harris, and Xavier Freeman cruising out there for the to be captains tonight. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. those are, uh, man, those are going to be some seniors that are tough to replace as we move on. Um, out, out of this year. You look at those two on, on the screen, right? Those are two of those linemen we're talking about, right? Two of those guys who have wow. been in the trenches for, for quite a while, um, know what they're doing, not going to let that chatty offensive line get in their head. No, and then, you know, it's just it's Iron Man football here at Heritage Halls has always been. You're going to see these guys, except for Andy on both sides of the ball, everybody out there. And, 
and you know something that's very very difficult and unique to do in football at any level especially in high school or college is to have five guys intact for two seasons in a row oh it's unbelievable and you know and with charlie who's not out there tonight but he has been a captain of course and and uh and grayson and then along with jack xavier eddie. And, and eddie johnston uh you know that's unusual and and we got jack griffin i say jack i always say david jack. yeah david griffin yeah, yeah. he's he's our jack of all trades can play literally all five positions junior and uh no, just sophomore just a sophomore, just sophomore is david and uh some other guys that fill in so you know um before we get going you know we're two minutes from kickoff one of the things that always amazes me having gotten i've worked with these guys three years closely as a coach and then and then of course watching as uh in our role here as employees of the school has been you know it's easy to throw out the uh well gosh they have the talent and they have all the the things he, that they perceive as advantages that we have here at heritage hall and we do have some but but what i will say having been around a long time and a lot of high school football is the accountability and the work ethic and the hard work that is put in by the charger football program is as much as intense and as high volume as I've ever seen. And we're going to stop right there because they're playing the National Anthem. Thank you to the Dixon Band for a nice rendition of our national anthem there. I always appreciate seeing the bands where we travel or when they come to our way. Um, it's nice to see. You know, getting talking a little scheme here, it looks like the, uh, the Comets are going to base out of a 4-4, which I ran a lot of years, and it's very versatile in today's spread stuff. You can, uh, you can, you know, you can turn that into a 5-2, an old-school 50. Uh, you can guide, come at, at it from every direction, not unlike what the Chargers run is the odd stack, which Mark Adams, is. he understands. I've listened to a lot of guys talk that odd stack, Dylan, and, and Mark understands that as well as anybody that I've been around. And it's a difficult scheme. But once, and these guys, of course, have it down. And, man, you can you talk about scorpions because you can come at you from every direction in that odd stack. Well, and you know that you know your defensive coordinator knows the defense well when you replace your entire middle five, right? All three linebackers, both safeties, and you're rolling into game seven, and they're starting to look even more and more like the Chargers of old, right, than what we're used to. Yeah, and, you know, I still I, I appreciate the guys. I hang around every now and then and, and talk a little football. It never gets old to me. And, and I uh, talked to Mark, and, you know, they were – they at the beginning of the year, they were a little frustrated, and we weren't tackling well. And one thing about that football deal, if, you know, a linebacker, you're either going to – you're going to get better or you're not. Right. <laughs> and it takes it's, a little bit of time. It, it takes some time. It's pretty noisy in there and pretty loud. But, you know, as we always say, there's nobody on the waiver wire, and these guys that have been playing have, are turning in, as always, to great players. Correct. And, and you know as well as anybody, Steve, those run fits in that stack – are so important. Those linebacker run fits and those safety run fits, you know, one wrong fit and you're going to the house. Yeah. Speaking of that, there's our super prep feature player of the game, Ben Showalter, front and center. Cal Welker standing next to him. And and um, I am thinking we are going to – I didn't pay attention, Dylan. I think we uh, are going to kick off. I don't know if we won or lost the toss, but I do think we're going to kick off, I think, because we're, we're, we're at the – with the win, we'll see you in just a second. Yes, sir. Um, last year, just real quickly, the Chargers uh, cruised to a 58-20 win, <clears throat> win over the Comets. Uh, current Oklahoma Sooner River Faulkner had seven carries for 200 yards and five touchdowns in the first half, and Andy Bass only threw six six balls, completed four for 104 and two touchdowns. Rashad Smith, I remember this when he had a 101-yard pick six, which was serious, serious. That was so cool. I was standing right in front of him. Man, what a play. Yes, it was. So we will be kicking off here, about to get under in our way here, Coach Sullivan. And uh, 
Mark Addy. So we got Bo Butler. Butler. Yeah, my man Bo Butler. I love it. That's a there's another legacy charger. My good friend Doug is uh, obviously Bo's dad, and there's a lot of Butlers running around the Charger campus. Yeah, yes, there are. Just well, just three now. There were four. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So Lucas is up down at OU. You so know, something interesting to see there, uh, Steve. You had last year's kickoff specialist number 22, Carter Counts, now on the uh, kickoff team as a tackler, also starting at corner for us. Well, every year it seems that we, we some senior comes out of nowhere to all of a sudden be a major contributor at a position, and I would say this year it's Carter Counts. No doubt, no doubt. I mean, I remember they talked about the summer when he started coming out for seven on seven as they got back from Arkansas, and I said, <laughs> looked at Marcus at how defense go. He goes, uh, good and some bad, but Carter Counts is going to be a player. Well, that joker can fly. Yes, he can. He can fly, and that's kind of helps you at corner, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Here we go. Bo Butler hits it deep. Number six on the, reser on the reception. Tackle out the 20. Hey, you love it. How about that? Our super prep feature player of the game, Ben Showalter, on the solo tackle. Nice job, Ben, right on cue, baby. Making the solo tackle on the 21 yard line on the return. That was number six, Austin Hart on that return. Brought down by Ben, as you said. Fighting the wind up here, fans, but we're gonna do our best for you. At quarterback, yeah, at quarterback's gonna be Colby Paulson. We weren't sure, a sophomore. We're told he has a little better throwing than the, the other senior starter. Well, that's what we heard is we're gonna get a dose of Ethan Byers, senior running back who, it doesn't have it here, but he's coming in at at least 240. We already had Mike back or Kyle Lowry on that tackle. It's so great, I, I, I saw Cal's mom, Gina and Craig before the game, the great Craig Brown, and so great to see Cal Han in there. You, there's some kids that have fought a little injury here and there, and then there's Cal. <laughs> there's Cal, you know, exactly. poor, poor old Cal, and, and, and nothing better than he said, "By gosh, I'm going to play," and heals those shoulders up, and he's probably hurting, but he's strapped up and in that mic position. Yeah, you can see that brace there on his left arm. Yep, that harness. There's Just some of the different action you talked about, right? We we had two different backers step up, one bluff in, one bluff out, and cause the false start there. Yeah, the, that's you know one thing about it. If that if you're in the if you're the running back, maybe don't get in that three point stance. And once you come out of it, you need to go sideways. So that'll bring up about second and about thirteen here. Steve, talk to us about a little bit about that different action you can bring. Like I said, we saw two different back, three different backers step up, two stay, one back off there. I mean, how much fun can you have out of that stack? Well, that's the thing. You can stem and move, however word you want to use. And, and they got them all up in there now, as you can see. There were, there's a the ball blitz. on the ground. He's going to recover it, but uh, for a major loss here. Um, you had Vogel on the blitz, came untouched through the A gap to the left of the center, and then Gerard Williams helps kind of clean it up on the back end. Jalen Clark was on that carry. He's the best looking comment I saw walking in here, running back. Third and long uh, into about a 25 mile an hour headwind. So <laughs> we'll see what, what they have, the comments have in mind here. Still in that wing look offset. Pistol formation gonna roll left here. Looking for number 14 down the field. Uh oh, uh oh. That's a pick by Jordan Harris and he is tackled just inside the five yard line. Kind of floated that one out there, and Jordan said, thank you very much. You know, and right, right off the bat, we got a first and goal to start the evening. You know, Steve, I said that he was looking for 14. As soon as the ball got in the air, the wind had different different ideas, right? <laughs> you don't want to float one today. You need to get on top of that thing and throw it. You know, Jordan, that was one of the biggest moves I've heard from the staff that, that helped them out was Jordan being able to take that safety position over after Carter was able to take a corner position over. Absolutely, I think I think Jordan is a, you need a ball hawker like that in the middle, that helps. Inverted bone, A-frame that we saw some last week. That's gonna to go to Barrett Travis right up the middle, gonna walk in the end zone with two guys on his back and the Chargers are on the board. Touchdown, Barrett Travis. You know that, uh, that little fake option route that, that they're running, that little mesh point back in the backfield, 
when you have Andy Bass as the guy with the ball in his hands, I don't know how you guess right, Coach. Well, they, and that Brett and those guys offensively do such a great job as you look at the swinging gate here, just something for our next three opponents to work on. Gives them extra 10 minutes every day in practice. They got to work on that. And uh, but it, it it is not easy to be right. You know, Brett and them scheme it up pretty great, and then you got a guy that breaking 4-4 in 3A football. That's a major problem. No problem. No <laughs> doubt. No doubt about that. Cal Welker on to attempt the extra point. And the uh, let's see if we decide to go for two here as the Comets jumped in the neutral zone. You know, most games that's Brett's MO. Let's see. Looks like it's what's going to yeah, be. Yeah. And uh, you had Walker Nelson there on the hole. Did you know Walker Nelson's gotten some talk from some junior colleges? Really? Yes. That's awesome. Hey, Walker yes. can move around now. Walker's got a good live arm, and he can move. Not being the starting quarterback here is no disgrace. No, it is not. So we're going to go ahead and take the chance for two from the one-and-a-half yard line here. Just a wider version of that A-frame here. We're going to go ahead and give it to Barrett. He's going to grind up in there and fall in the end zone for the two-point conversion. That's going to make it 8 nothing. We're going to take a quick break as we get ready to kick off. Chargers lead at 8 nothing, 10 14 to go in the first quarter here in Dixon, Oklahoma. Oklahoma is known for its lakes, farm ponds, and creeks. And whether you take a highway or a dirt road to get there, Joe Cooper Jeep gets you to your destination. Right now, buy any Jeep for 10% below employee pricing. Plus, Joe Cooper always gives you more for your trade-in. And remember, we'll beat any dealer's price on a new Jeep by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Oh, it's going to be hard uh -oh. to catch him. I don't think I, they're, they're going to catch him. Um, no, not even really chasing, as a matter of fact. That's a 71-yard touchdown there for Andy Bass. Oh, I love the Spider-Man meme celebration. Oh, okay, is that what that, see, you would, you'd know that. Absolutely. I, <laughs> I thought the track boys saying, you're faster, I'm faster, you're faster. That was fantastic. Well, there are some fast cats in that group, but. Uh, I think he's the fastest. Uh, he might be the fastest. <laughs> and that's saying something in that group. Jeez. Okay, so a 71-yard uh, throwback from Barrett Travis. So Barrett Travis has a touchdown passing and a touchdown running and a two-point conversion, and Andy Bass has a touchdown reception. Unless that was a lateral, not sure. But uh, we're going to say pass. So Barrett Travis has a two-pointer, a touchdown pass, and a touchdown run. And there is, there's a running play out of the uh, swinging gate for another two-point conversion. Graham Murphy. I thought, I thought we were going to get to see some high jump form as that defender came up to tackle him, <laughs> but he just lowered his shoulder and, and stepped in the end zone. So quickly, we'll stay right here with 8:17 left. First quarter, Chargers up 16, nothing. Uh, you know, like I said, it takes a village for Charger Vision led by the great Luke Steelman, and, but we have a lot of people that help us uh, financially to make Charger Vision happen, and one of them, our regulars, is uh, 9th Street Barking Lot. Uh, visit them at 9thStreetBarkingLot.com to schedule your bark bus pickup from Heritage Hall Campus. Uh, Coach Kyle Gillum looks forward to spending uh, spoiling your pups at his first class facility in downtown OKC. If you've ever, I was driving by there the other day, it's the coolest looking place. and. Literally, there is a bus that will pick up your dog if that's how you'd like to do it. Um, you know, they get to ride in a school bus. It looks a lot like ours, but it's green. It looks like it's from McGinnis. My dog, Riley, is a regular customer. Oh, yeah? Uh, she she takes up half the bus, man. She takes up half the bus. She absolutely <laughs> loves it. Uh, and she, KG is one of the uh, only places to take a 110-pound <laughs> <laughs> she, 110 cow, pound yeah. Holstein, right? Exactly. We took her to the fair a couple weeks ago. She dang near one. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> so here we are, ready to kick off again. Chargers quickly up 16 0. Uh, you know, just, you know, without, I don't want to be insulting or anything, but we're going to, we're going to do some stuff that's going to keep our next few opponents very busy um, formation wise. We did it last week, and we're going to, they're going to see plenty of different looks tonight. Um, that one right there, it, you know, nobody can go one way or the other tomorrow on a play like we just saw. There's a nice kickoff by Bo Butler for a touchback with a good south wind. Great job. Bo, just a freshman, uh, just like his brother, can boot that ball. Bo's a good player. He is. I, I tried to get that athlete to come out for basketball. And 
He said, you know what, Coach? I think, I think football and soccer are going to be my thing. Okay. He said, I can't argue. Two sports is enough, I guess. I'd like three, but I'll take two. It's better, better than none, better than one. We'll get to we'll get into that as this game goes, but you know, soccer boys are going for a repeat. Girls, soccer going for a three-peat. That's right. Tennis and everything else, a lot of, a lot of success. Yeah, a track, track, my yeah. goodness, what a spring we had. Wide at A formation that time, going to play Ooh, action. Play action. Great way to handle the ball. Jordan was a little bit late, but had great closing speed there. That number. Kobe Casas on the reception yeah. there. First down, Comets. That guy came all the way across the formation there. Junior running back, I think he's on the, he's on the left side of that. Mm -hmm. George is a little bit late getting over that time. It's a, wing, a good hit. it's a wing look there with that tight end. And that time, you know, one thing about it, our guys, you know, it doesn't matter if it's a big kid like seven, no fear. That was a – Yeah, Ethan Byers. Yeah, no gain there for Ethan. You know, it's one thing we saw last year in the state championship game, especially coaches. Draw Williams can absolutely lay down an open field tackle. I know, and he's – He's getting bigger. I mean, what is he, 155, 160? Soaking wet. And, uh, of course, he is – the sky's the limit for that young man. He's just a, just a sophomore. He made some incredible possession-saving and touchdown-saving tackles in the state title game last yeah, year. Yeah, and then went to the spring and let off two major relays for our, our track team, state champions. Better yardage that time. And a handoff to five. Jalen Clark is still running. Great physical run there by Clark. That's a little bit of the, what we talked about earlier in the broadcast, Coach. Had a little trouble tackling the start of the season. We just saw a little bit of repeat of it. Hopefully that's, that wipes off the mat tonight and that, we'll clean that up. Well, two, you know, and two really good physical backs by the Comets, and that's a good scheme there on the kind of the uh, – Oh, it's not a jet sweep because of where he was, but the, the lateral handoff we Same see so often action, on right? see so often on Saturday afternoons. You had some pulling some pulling linemen. He had, he had a lot of people out in front of him. I think they're not going to come back to that. <laughs> Big four more yards there yeah. for Clark. Yanni Abadi and Vogel on that tackle there. Yeah, my man Bladen there. Uh, you know, another young man that's that's really battled some injuries in his career, and it's great to see Bladen out there with great speed at outside linebacker playing for the Chargers. You know, again, testament to Clark's strength there. Charlie's not a small guy. Clark jug him for about a yard and a yeah, half. Yeah, I don't know. He and Xavier are probably the strongest guys on the team, right? Mm -hmm. In the weight room. Yes, sir. Then maybe the QB thrown in there somewhere. Uh, he's pretty strong. There's that same play again. And great right tackle. on cue, Gerard. Yeah, Gerard comes out there on the outside, as you said, Coach, on cue. Open field tackle, a guy bigger than him. But Gerard's got a knack. I had a coach that used to call him well, shin biters, right? He has a knack for getting down there right at the knee, right below the knee. You're going to have to do some special things, hurdle or, or some quick feet to not get tackled by him. No, it's smart by him. Self-preservation, too, with a back like that. Uh-oh. Darn it. For the Comets, they got a third and three or three and a half. Now they're looking at third and eight. Yeah, it's the same uh, Cassis who had that big catch down here about the 35 to get that first first down of the game. Sitting over there in kind of an H-back look and a little quick to get off the line. Well, you know, this group's a lot more physical and, uh, than our previous opponent, and, and, and uh, there's a reason they're three and three. Yeah, you get hit in the mouth early and you come out with a, a nice little drive here. Something to be said for it. Great responsibility there by Vogel. Wait, great job keeping his eyes on his responsibility, not getting fooled by that backfield action. Well, he obviously didn't have the keeper on that one. Correct. And he, Correct. he was coming in hard. And so the safety had the keep. And, uh, you know, that's just it. You, you, you can switch responsibilities. And offensively, you never know who's going to have pitch, who's going to have the QB. On that, on that read play that we see so often on Saturday afternoons. It's what everybody does. And uh, if he'd have pulled it, we had Rashad standing right there. Again, Bladen and those guys coming. Awesome. <laughs> Great pickup on the inside. Uh-oh. There's a pick by Rashad. Job, it's going to be Rashad. a blind side. Yep, yep. 
Great spin wheel on the sideline. Well, you know, in the old days, you know, that's kind of what happened on interceptions. You peeled back and the offensive lineman or the defensive lineman loved it. And I suppose it's a better rule. You're talking to an old defensive guy here, but uh, the blind side block is what's going to be called here. And, and, and it's a safety rule. It's a good rule. Yeah, as we, as we have a, a Dixon comment down, you know, that's, that's yeah. kind of the point of the rule, right? Yeah. Um, again, just like you said, when I played, that was we were taught to, to peel back, right? Sure. That's, that's what we were supposed used to, to do. used to be how you, you know, how you, I remember in the old days with Tonga winning state titles when we were coaching at Heritage back in the mid-90s, and they were they were notoriously great at punt return. They set up that wall, that staggered wall, yeah, and they'd, the back. they'd pick people off yeah. like crazy, old Frank Pick. But, uh, yeah, young man down, it was 70-something. Yeah, I couldn't tell. Yeah, he's up and going. No, I'm sorry. 55, 55. Cameron Smothers. Looks like he's up and going to be okay. Going to come on off the field. That probably hurt. Maybe knocked the wind out of him. Yeah, he's got a little head shake. He's shaking some webs out there. You know, as far as from the trainer's side of you, never a great thing when you see the, the call web shakes. No, that was uh, I, I think I couldn't tell if that was Jack Harris that did that or Charlie, one of those guys on that but uh great drive stopping pick by rashad smith yeah back back to that play they picked up the blitz really well there coach he had yeah, bladen bladen had a uh he ran into big number seven and uh mm -hmm. <laughs> he felt it well, you th you're rolling to your left on across your body across the middle late that's that's a tough that's a tough play to make especially when you got the guys on the back end that we do not something rashad had to come out of the game for some reason right there that Boston that came in for yes, him? Was. Yeah, yes, Boston was. forward. So traditional twins right here. That was well covered. They're going for the deep shot there for Gerard Williams. Well covered well. by the Comets. You know, Gerard kind of sparsely comes in those offensive plays. If he's in, a lot of times it's for him, kind of like the Gavin Freeman does for OU. That was great coverage there by number 27, Jalen Douglas. Back to a power look in that A-frame inverted bone here. They haven't stayed in it yet. They did this last week, shifting out to a quads look here. Single tough, side receiver. That's, yeah, ah, that's, with the wind, it's tough. Yeah, it's hard to it's harder to throw those into with the wind than into it. Didn't look like Andy put much on that, and it just kept going. So Chargers looking at third and ten right here. You know, Dixon didn't get a uh, didn't get a score, any points in the last drive, but the ability to move the ball down and then now a potential stop in their future—it's a good way to respond to those first two touchdowns. If nothing else, flip the field, right? Exactly. A nice play there. Nice play there by number four, Caleb Casas, probably the brother of 88. Yep. Colby Casas, certainly, and bats that one down and forces the Chargers to punt it. You know, Steve, I looked at the uh, coverage on, on most every play there. Really solid, solid coverage. And obviously, we're trying to get some some backside spin out and, and a roll out to a, a deep post there with Rashad, but he's bracketed by an under defender and an over. Yeah, I you know, honestly don't see this very much from the Chargers. I don't know what the flag was. I think we have 12. Uh, pretty sure we have 12 people. Yeah, legal substitution. Yeah. Well, Cal Welker's coming off. I don't know if it's his fault, but that's that's who's coming off. So again, like you said, switching the field a little bit here. We have Carter Counts back there. We'll take the snap on this punt. Luckily, we got some wind with us. If we can get a, a hold of one, we'll have a Decent chance at the ball going. If it wasn't fourth and 15 in this deep, Coach Bover's always a threat to fake it, but we're gonna get the ball up in the air, let the wind carry it a little bit. Yeah. Not, Not his a, best punt. Nope, but we got a little bounce to get across the 50. So about a about a about a 30 yard punt right at 30. Yep. So Comets come feeling a little more confident after a few first downs on the last drive till a pick was thrown. Gonna come back at midfield with great field position, trying to get on the board here with 4.15 left in the first quarter. As we wait to 
change this possession over. Again, as you said, Steve, community helps us put on Charger Vision. Huge thank you to Stanley's Graduation, offering Johnson's products and conveniently located in Edmond. For all your high school grad needs, class rings, letter jackets, announcements, and championship rings. Celebrating moments that matter, Stanley's Graduation Services. Call or visit at Jostens.com. Yeah. Cal Lowry with his first contact there at Barrett, and Charlie cleaned that one up, but not until after a gain of eight yards by Clark. Uh, really good physical run right there. They found something they like going to their right with uh, Jalen. I keep forgetting his first name, Jalen Clark. Good looking back as we walked in. He's every bit of 210 pounds and yoked up, been in the weight room. Coach, who was the running back that went to Nevada from John Marshall? Uh, give me a minute. He's as good as I've ever coached against in high school. I'm not saying we're, we're meeting him, but he runs similarly. Yeah, that guy was serious. Oh, no. that was Roll serious. out again, and did he have it? Yep, Cass is on the reception, 88. Yeah. Forced out of bounds by Lowry. There's your first down. Again, like you said, they found something to this right side of the field. There's something they're liking over here. It happens to be the short side of the field right now, but that's not bothering them. They're just going to keep, keep well, going over well, here. Well, a lot of there's a lot to be said at, at this level. People like to run stuff into their boundary from their hash, and makes it difficult to sub. Some basics, you know, it sounds crazy, yep. but people like running the stuff into their boundary. Yeah, difficult to sub, like you said. Heck, less defenders. Just straight handoff. Big Byers, Ethan Byers, gets about a yard is all that time. A uh, host of Chargers led by who we sitting down there. Looks like, oh gosh darn, Xavier, Xavier Freeman. Eddie Johnston coming in. There'll be a lot of movement and uh, substitution on that D-line. Eddie plays a lot. Eddie had a few, uh, few goes at Mike during 7-on-7 seven yeah. seven season. Yeah, he started out the season at Mike, and yeah, they decided to well. bring him back down. Cal getting healthy. Cal Lowry, that is. Back over here to your boundary side. A little better gang tackle there by the Chargers. First quarter moving right along. Two and a half minutes to go here. Brings up a third and six for the Comets. Sure, they're getting two to make six right here with this spot on the field. I don't think they're trying to field goal. Absolutely. And they're, like we knew coming in and we saw when we walked in the stadium, they are just absolutely feeding Jalen Clark tonight. I mean, he might end this game with upwards of 30 carries. Well, both good looking backs. I mean, they've got a, they've got a couple good backs. Tight end's a good looking kid, so, you know. Had Freeman on the pressure there. Fought off his block very quickly. Couldn't tell if it was a little bit of mis miscommunication in the backfield or uh, the play was straight, to play that. straight roll. And uh, you, put, you, know, you the, put the ball out there for a little bit of a fake the, the, start. The, the, he didn't mesh very yeah, well with right, the fake. Right, right, right. So fourth down, just sit in there, Chargers. Don't be jumping right here, and hopefully we can stop them. Obviously, the Comet's going to go for it here deep in our territory. Like we spoke about, though, Steve, worst case scenario for the Comets right now, the ball's staying on our side of the field. That's a win. We'll give them that. Yeah, they, they, they moved. Oh, timeout. Coaches didn't like what they saw there. Big, you know, big play for the Comets, about fourth and seven, uh, fourth and six maybe, and uh, trying, to, trying to pick it up, maybe get on the board here. Chargers need a stop. Yeah, they do. They came out of the gates absolutely rock and roll. And like you said, changing up formations, giving opponents things to think about. Uh, would venture to guess that Brett is still in a script. Coach Boger is still in the script for the most part. Probably off script for one, one play on that third and ten. But I bet he's got another eight, ten plays left in that script. Always a lot going on at Heritage Hall. Besides football, obviously, and want to congratulate. Uh, it's harder for me to read, guys, a little dark. Lily Jackson, cheerleader, who was named all region last week. The Charger cheer squad is now preparing for the game day regional meet that takes place in early November. Stay tuned for more info about that in the future. Good job, Lily. Another 
Charger legacy family and old her dad and old teammate and Paul Jackson. I know you hear Paul on the call a lot for the Chargers and Charger Vision and Lily Jackson number five to go through. Ah, number five. <laughs> oh my goodness. They did. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's nobody out there. I wouldn't say that worked out well for the Commons, Coach. Well, I don't know what we're doing, and I don't, I don't blame our coaches for saying that is intentional grounding. There is nothing, there's no out of the pocket rule that you get to throw it away. There wasn't a blue shirt within 30 yards of that. Um, we're going to take over on downs right there. <laughs> they, gra they grabbed Jack Harris around the waist <laughs> right there. They did. <laughs> Yes, they did. Well, I looked for something, you know, Coach Boger tried to dial up some deep shots last mm -hmm. time. I'm looking on the ground right here. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Shipped out to quads again, like you mentioned last drive. Uh-oh, great shot there. there. We go. What a spin move out of it. Nice job, yes sir. Rashad Smith on the curl route. Turns the other way and we can't get him on, they can't get him on the ground. And that is a 68 yard touchdown strike from Andy Bass to Rashad Smith. And just like that, 22 zip Chargers with 142 left here in the first. Coach, we said we might see the, the ground game and Coach Burger said, well, pardon you, pardon me, I've only got two minutes left of the win and we're gonna toss it. Yeah, I think they'll, either way but uh you know it's it's a it's a beautiful thing to have that script and know that mostly anything you call has a great chance of being successful yeah and it, we mentioned uh jordan harris is not yet to keep his touchdown streak alive but rashad smith does i think i think we got a great chance i think we do too <laughs> cal welker on to try the extra point here snap back Good job. Well done, Walker Nelson. By Walker. You know, Coach, incredible stat to have two guys through six games who have scored a touchdown in every game. Non-quarterback, right? Yeah, that's uh, that's not normal. <laughs> of course, neither is Coach Bogert's record, so. That's true. Um, that's you true. know, we've, this, uh, you know, not to jump ahead too far, after all, we're only in the first quarter, but the district uh, schedule ramps up the next three weeks. Our, our district schedule is back loaded. Yep. We, we go down here the same direction next Friday night to Plainview, and then we go homecoming versus Sulphur and wrap it up at home senior night versus Marlowe, and those are the three best other teams in the is district. That, is that 10, 8, and 3, I think, ranks in the state? Yeah. You know, and those guys are led by good coaches, you know, Matt Weber at uh, Marlowe, state champion coach himself. Marlowe's got good athletics overall. They yeah, do, absolutely. They do it right down there. Absolutely. We, we got to scrimmage their basketball team last fall, and they came in prepared and absolutely ready to, to compete, and he's, he's done a good job. We saw him in the state tournament uh, in 15 when we were able to pull away and, and win it, and we saw him again in 16 mm -hmm. in area. I mean, he, yeah, down at Chickasha, right? Exactly. They do a great job. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Carter Count's now going to kick off here this time. He's going to drill it to about the two-yard line. Clark the knocks it Clark. down. Yeah, He's going to pick it up, though. 19 or 20. So batted down and picked up for a decent return just outside, just, excuse me, inside the 20. As uh, I'm sure the comments are about ready to get out of the wind in their face. <laughs> well, coach up here, I, I can feel the wind in my face. I can only imagine. <laughs> We're just lucky it didn't out of the north and it's about 35. It's still, the temperature's fine tonight. It's just breezy and maybe get a little break in this heat starting tomorrow, it sounds like. Doesn't that sound like to you, coach? I think so. I think you got yeah, this front coming in. It's going to be a beautiful weekend in the 60s. By, by the way, shout out to Coach Chard for making me comfortable tonight and having an extra <laughs> jacket in the back. <laughs> That's a lot of times on the uh, – there's the, the – more of the jet sweep that time to Casas. Big old kid, and it takes two or three chargers to get him down. Yeah, a bit of an end-around look out of the, that little H-back 
that he's been playing. Picks up a couple there, second and eight coming up for the Comets. Just getting to a minute left here in the first quarter. Uh, pretty long quarter when you're scoring three times, takes a bit. Pretty much been the same formation the entire game. There's that same play that had the big gain earlier. That guy's giving it everything he's got. Clark is running hard. On the bottom of that pile is, is that Xavier? Getting up a little bit slowly, but that is Xavier Freeman. You're not gonna out physical him. Xavier, another great story that's worked his way into a college football player. He's, I believe, gonna go to East Central. Is that right, coach? For everything I've heard. Yeah, let's go down to Ada and play. And what a, what a great deal for, for Xavier. You have to wait a little bit to sign, right? Your football signing period is a little bit different. Speaking of, coming up early in November, we got a gonna have a couple athletes that are signing for baseball. Yeah, yeah, I heard that. That's going to wrap up the first quarter as it gets under five seconds. The comments are going to let it go. We're going to take a commercial break here at the quarter. Chargers have jumped out to a 23 nothing lead here in Dixon, Oklahoma. We'll be right back for quarter number two. Oklahoma City, I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to tune into my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. <laughs> Deputy Postuff grew out of our love of historic preservation and architectural salvage of building materials. Whether you're looking for doors, light fixtures, hardware, reclaimed lumber, statues, plants, or home decor, Dead People Stuff is the perfect piece for your next project. And the Dead People Stuff family is growing. Come check out our 40,000 square foot compound featuring a brewery, barbecue, tattoo shop, barber shop, and a cat cafe. We pay you cash to haul off your trash. Help us save history one piece at a time. Welcome back, Charger fans. Quarter number one is in the books, and the Chargers, as you might expect, have uh, scored three times and with a couple of two-point conversions lumped in there to, to take a 23-0 lead here at Dixon. Dixon just uh, east of Ardmore, about seven miles. I have never been to Dixon before tonight. Nice place, got a great track, good setup. Got great fans tonight. I think we've got some, wow, I just looked down. This is a massive turnout of Dixon home fans. Looks like we got Kitty. A little cheerleader night that always brings out a bunch of fans like we do at charge with the chargers and young chargers and uh, a lot of pink breast cancer awareness month going on so uh good festive high school football night here on a thursday in dixon oklahoma back to action here big third and six five maybe for the comets direct snap to clark this time a little bit different he's going to get the corner and uh get a first down Finally knocked out there by Jordan Harris. Got around that corner around Gerard well, Williams. What we we just would call that an un, it's just an unbalanced look there. If you kind of a trips bunch, but really just unbalanced line just with backs and direct snap to Clark. Good good scheme uh, by they got us leveraged and got the corner. Yeah, he's he's a pretty good player, Coach. I, I'm enjoying watching him battle yeah, every just time. Just a junior, I think. Back to the formation we've seen. They're hand off to Byers, number seven. About to pick up about four there from Byers. Big old kid. We had Jack Harris there on the stop. We will not, one guarantee, we will not be in this district next year because in case you didn't know, our Chargers will be playing 4A football next year. So our district will consist of uh, Clinton, Weatherford, Newcastle, uh, Cash, Chickasha, class and SAS, tough, pretty tough league. Elk City in there as well. Yeah, Elk City, the I-40 corridor there. We got it's yep. a pretty good, pretty good league. So second seven for the Comets, inside handoff to Clark. Uh, got our feature player there helping on the there stop. There you go, Ben Showalter. Subbed in for Cal Lowry. He and Charlie got your body on that one. Short gain there brings up third and five for the Comets. 
One thing about it, Clark and Byers, they don't get pushed back. They're going to fall forward mm -hmm. when they are stopped. Mm -hmm. the two very strong runners. Third and five for the Comets. Let's go, Chargers. You're gonna roll right and throw it. Bracketed there, nobody open. Good job by Jordan Harris and uh, Carter Counts there on the coverage. Those, those were uh, two very likely members of your spring four by, four by two team, so tough to run by those two. <laughs> have to run by one of them and then they got you surrounded, right? So I would imagine the uh, Comets will punt here, fourth and five. Maybe not. Saying what the heck. Quick. Yeah. Oh, oh, they gosh, pick it up. The oh, there's, hey, you gotta love it. Fourth and five, what do they have to lose? No, you're right, and there's you know one of those missed run fits we talked about that are so so crucial, right? He faked a little little hard step one way, we had the fit go out to the outside, and he came back, cut up the middle. Very good run there. So first down, clock running, 10 minutes to go in the half here. Chargers up 23 to nothing. Uh, Comets have had some success. So I, think that's a, I think that's their fourth or fifth first down here in the first half. Inside again to Clark and uh, finds a seam for about five yards. Coach, you're right. Clark, every single time it might be everything in his body that he's given every single time. Every time he touches the ball, he is full head of steam. How hard downhill can he go? Well, that's the thing across the state and at this great high school athletic level of football. You got kids that maybe you'll never hear about this kid, but he, you know he's given everything he's got for his home team, and you got to love it. So back to the uh, same formation, wing right. Going to run an inside handoff to the tight end Casas this time. Good job there. Eddie Johnston on the first contact there and, and drove him back. Way to go, Ed. Great play. You know, Coach, they've been really creative with Cassis well, 88. But what, you know, what they're doing, there are aspects of, you, for you older fans out there, this is a, a little bit of wing T action. Um, you know, some misdirection with the backs and then using that wing, in this case the tight end, to some inside handoffs. It's akin to some wing T uh, traits. So third and five again. Let's see if the Chargers can bow up here. Got that unbalanced here to the to, to their left. Back to Clark. Going to get it and have another shot at it. He's it's in. right up in there. He's going to pick it up. Now that didn't. That's how you get him down. That went right on the as you say face mask on the chin right there. I think the Chargers are going to call timeout. I think Mark Adams seen enough of this. <laughs> Something like that, anyway, over there from Coach Adams. Yeah, you know, when he when he gets bent over and starts clapping those hands, you know, he might be a little colorful and, and telling telling the team to figure out their fits and figure out how to stop it. You know, the, the comments have been really, really again creative, and especially how they're outnumbering us on certain sides of the field, right? Like you said, it's very unbalanced. Um, the motion in the backfield, kind of the window dressing, as you would say. And that's, you know, we might have to move a man or whatever, and you know, I need to look at it close, more closely, but the thing about the odd stack that it, it, it doesn't really, it doesn't hurt you as bad with this stuff because it's such a balanced up look because right. of those two dogs or the overhang safeties, they're there. Right. Um, but obviously they found a little crease there, something, you know, to their left. So first and 10 for the Comets and they're on the move. From the Charger 32 yard line. Chargers with a little uh, do better talk there from Coach Mark Adams, I imagine. And we've little changes. We got Eddie in there in the middle. We got Charlie out here to three tech and a four eye there. 
four-man front. They've adjusted to a four-man front and then uh, no gain there. First contact, my man Bladen Vogel. Just a short gain there, about two and a half. Oh, doggone it. I didn't see old Cal favoring that left shoulder with he's got that harness on it. Darn it. That will bring in Ben Showalter to play that mic. He's our he's the guy that can play all three of those spots, and Ben jumped right in there and see hopefully Ocal's okay. Second and seven for the Comets. Lazavier Freeman is the one of the guys that can take that guy down on him by himself. <laughs> Beautiful solo tackle there by Xavier. Early returns, only two plays. Early returns on the four down. Speaking of the Freemans, I bet they're probably nice to have an off weekend here. Oh my Sooner's goodness. off, they can take a breath, and which I'm sure every minute of is fun, but that's a that's a heck of a schedule. Watch going to Xavier's and then going wherever the Sooners play. What a great problem to have. A lot of times, if it's a Friday night game, you have Coach Freeman here and Mrs. Freeman on the road. Right. Here's your inside handoff again to Casas. And Bladen again, Bladen Vogel sniffing this stuff out. That's going to be a loss there. Bring up fourth and a long seven. Obviously, the Comets are going to continue to push the pedal and go. I don't know the number of tackles, Coach. I think it might be five or six already for Vogel. He's been doing a great job from that raw position. Got Barrett out at that Lou. And then, as we mentioned, Ben Showalter there in the mic. Going to roll and throw it. Nobody home and great stop by the Chargers there as they bow up. Went to that even front there and kind of gave the uh, the Comets a different look and, and uh, Amy was able to stymie that drive. But not till the Comets got to the Charger 29 yard line where the Chargers will take over on downs with 6.17 to go. We'll stay right here, 23 zip, Chargers on top. We'll see what we do with this wind as a major factor this evening, Coach. It is, the close receiver there was number eight, Justice Throneberry. Uh, we had him bracketed high and low. He had Xavier on great closing speed. Um, from the D tackle position and uh, kind of blew that play up. Play action roll out for Andy. Ball oh my air. goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Coach, not to not to belabor that tip ball, but uh, we had Rhett Davis running. Well, about as wide open as a guy can run. If that sure. ball gets there, he's still running right now. Right, and you know, to the Comets credit, that's two balls batted down this evening, which I don't see much of that this year. So, you know, that's not easy to do. It doesn't matter what the height of the quarterback is, that's just hard to do. Can't be doing that. That little stack action we had down here, we had a formation I played called Ninja. Mm -hmm. Ah. We're roughing the passer action down here, I think, Coach. Yeah. Rhett Davis, the intended receiver there, is Andy. Andy was quickly flushed to his right on that on that play. He's not having as much time as he's accustomed on a few of these pass plays so far this evening. It's not easy to sack. We are going to get a roughing the passer to pick up a Charger first down. However, when we were in middle school, Coach, I brought up that ninja package. J.T. Thatcher was one of our assistant football coaches over at Alcott Middle School. And he, he brought that from Coach Mike Leach, had those stacked receivers on both sides. Yeah, he called it Ninja. Yeah, we've run it. Yeah, it was fun stuff. Yeah, that was, hey, in case you guys didn't know, that was Coach Sullivan talking middle school. <laughs> middle school football. <laughs> One of you, okay. Tied in trips to the bottom of the screen here. Gonna give it to Barrett up in there. Uh-oh, Barrett Travis off to the races. And he is going to cruise in untouched for the Chargers' fourth touchdown in the evening. And just like that, kind of, kind of some some positive vibes for the Comets are erased with that uh, cross-country run by Barrett Travis. He's having a great night. 
29 on the board, 5.56 left in the half here in, da in uh, Dixon, Oklahoma. Barrett Travis is uh, trying to do his best River Faulkner impression. River had five touchdowns in the first half last year in this game, and Barrett is now responsible for, is that three total, Coach? Yeah, yeah, pass and two rushes and yeah. a two-point conversion. Yeah. So Cal Welker on to attempt the extra point. Oh, that was a, just hit that one in the middle of the ball and it goes right under the crossbar for the miss. So the score remains 29, nothing here with 5.56 left in the half. Chargers comfortably in front. As we wait for this next kickoff to get going, talking about another fall sport wrapping up the season. Charger volleyball came to an end last week in the regional action at Southwest Covenant. Our girls won their first round match three to zero against four seed Sharon Mutual, but their luck ran out in the semifinals. They fell to the number one ranked host Patriots. The Schwab squad demonstrated <laughs> grit and resilience all season as they never gave up and had many close sets against a gauntlet of top ranked opponents. The team is very young and expects to take a big step forward next season. Charger Nation is proud of the volleyball girls. Onward Chargers. Well, let's see what the Chargers special teams crew led by Coach Freeman wants to do with this kick. As I mean, this is not a, you know, I would imagine deep onside to towards the numbers at the 20 on a, on a good night because it it hasn't died like we had hoped, Coach Sullivan. In fact, if anything, it's whipping. <laughs> it's whipping. It is whipping. I'm not kidding you now. Not, I don't know how interested our fans in this. There's got to be a hundred little Dixon Comet cheerleaders ready for halftime down there. At least a hundred of them. I don't mean to sound partial because I have a three-year-old daughter, but how would you not be interested in that, Coach? <laughs> That ship has sailed for me, pal. My daughter's 16. <laughs> Here we go. Bo Butler on that kick. That's a pretty good kick to the 24, or the 15-yard line, excuse me. Good run back there by number 14 for the Comets. Get your name here in just a second. We had Graham Murphy on the tackle. Coach, you're going to have to help me. Huh? The Jabin Keener. Okay. On that return, Jabin Keener, number 14, sophomore. About a step from breaking that a little longer. We would have gotten him eventually, but that was a solid run back. So great field position for the Comets just at the 36-yard line, their own 36. 29 nothing Chargers, 5.50 to go here in the first half. It's a standing room only crowd here in Dixon. Standard formation. Wing look here, inside handoff to Casas again. And uh, another strong run, Rashad Smith with the solo tackle, but not before a pickup of four yards from Casas again on that inside wing T look. You know, Coach, you mentioned it earlier, but 88 Casas, good looking athlete. Yeah, absolutely. I, You know, he's got to be 6'2 or 3 and runs it up in there pretty good. So. You know, I like the scheme that, that Dixon has. They've done, they're doing a good job in accentuating all three of their good skill players in this. And, you know, it's they don't they are not able to throw the ball great and that makes them more one dimensional, but these kids are these kids are running it up in their heart. And there's another right on cue, another one. Five yards. Myers there, right? Yep, and that's Jack Harris and and uh, Showalter in on the tackle again there, along with Charlie Ganyabati. So third and very short coming up for the Comets. See what we do if we go. I don't know if we're going to go back to that even front or. I don't think so. Uh, you got David Griffin. Yeah, David, in there David the Griffin bike. playing in there at Mike. Oh, had a chance in there. Let's see. I think he. I think we held him short. A little short. He certainly there. did. The the side judge says fourth down. So. Great lateral pursuit there by Showalter and Griffin. Right now, yeah, 
Rashad Smith coming out and, and Eddie coming in for the, to make the extra D lineman go with that even front here on fourth and very short. Here we go, get down, no jumping. Here we go, got that unbalanced again. Direct snap to Clark coming up. Direct snap Clark. He didn't get it by much. No. Well, they gave him a pretty good spot. He didn't get it by much, but he did stuff it up in there for about a half a yard. So that's all they needed. Another first down for the Comets, however, at their own 47 yard line. Under four minutes to go here in the first half. You know, Coach, one nice thing, if there's one about going against the formation like this, this isn't exactly something somebody else is going to come and steal and put in in a week. No, absolutely not. No, a little different here, a little more. They direct snap it to uh, number seven, seven who gets about three yards. You know, I don't blame him for that. It, it just hurries up the action, you know. You have to hold your block about a half second less when you have the direct snap. It, you know, and when, when you're one dimensional like that, that makes sense. Uh, you weren't kidding, Coach. That is a lot of little cheerleaders. <laughs> That's just one group. Wow. So second, that was a pickup of three. They're second and seven for the Comets. That was a sneaky three pickup. Sneaky three. We got timeout here by the Comets. 2.55 left. Comets take what I believe is their second timeout. Yeah, of the half. Take this time to thank uh, another Charger Vision sponsor. This one's near, near and dear to my heart. One of my buddies, the uh, company's Three Points Land. Proud to support the Chargers. The Chargers are proud to have them on our team. Three Points Land is leading the industry in land services for energy innovation. Visit threepointsland.com to learn more. It's a pledge brother of mine, Alex Wolf. Wolf, that's right. Yeah, he's a good guy, good guy. Very, very thoughtful, thoughtful man. He is a, a dad of one with a second on the way. Okay, getting ready to be back to action here. Second and seven. Comets have picked up a couple of first downs on this possession. No, again, we're going to direct snap it. Oh, Canadian League, they took off early. <laughs> you know, Canadian League, fantastic reference. You know, that would be the, that would be so maddening to be a defensive coordinator at that, in that Canadian. They got 12 players, and they get a free, they get to a run, running start. You know, sort of like arena, right? A running start. So that'll cost them five. Bring up second and about 12 for the Comets. You know, it's interesting. Speaking of that and motions. I feel like in the college game, refs have gotten significantly more lax on being set for that full second before the snap. Well, we all watched that great goal line stand, and those big D tackles for Texas were not set two no, times. No. But we'll take it. We stopped them anyway. There's a little bit of reverse action to Clark. Stayed home there. Oh, what a tackle there by – is that Carter? Yes, it is. Carter counts with the great tackle for loss on the Comets' best player. Bring up a third and long now. Coach Bogert told me that he knew Carter was gonna be big time for them. They were scrimmaging Washington, that five-star tight end they had, and he and Carter one-on-one, -on -one, and one of them left the field and one of them stayed on, and I'll let you guess which one left. Yeah, I talked to Carter about that. I remember they scrimmaged him over Carl Albert. Washington, a really good 2A team, the defending champs about three D1s on that team that I know about. Okay, so third and long for the Comets. You gotta be kidding me, he's taking his last time out here. Okay. Uh, third and 17. Guess you gotta dial up the, that old play you have in your back pocket that says third and 17 with the wind. This is the one we go to. Coach, give, give, give us your uh, your expert analysis so far in the game. How's what we think about our defense? How how are we fit and how are we play? Well, 
I, you know, I'm always amazed at, you know, let's just let's be realistic here. And I, I'm always respectful of how the Chargers are able to take things week to week. Um, they know deep down that Dixon cannot beat them in a four-quarter four football game. And they knew it last week, and they knew it the week before. Yet Coach Bogart and his crew get these guys prepared similarly every week. Just like we hear the Oklahoma Sooners, this doesn't. This is not a pro or a college thing that you have the market on. Running your team correctly and having them ready every week, regardless of the opponent, is one of the things I always admire about our Chargers because, you know, like I said, this, this team can't beat us, and that's okay. Uh, they're giving a game effort, but our guys are businesslike, and they know that their bigger goal is to play week 14. They want to nothing to get in the way of that, and, and they're not letting that happen on a long bus ride tonight. So that's what I'm most impressed with right there. Direct snap here. He got ahead of steam. Oh, wow, what a run by Byers. He picks up about 15 of that 17 right there, so brings up a fourth and two. Big fourth and two. Let's Chargers, let's have a stop. I don't know if we're gonna let's see if we get Eddie Johnston back in there. And here he comes uh, to go back to that even front. Rashad Smith out. You know, I'm gonna say maybe number five is gonna get it. I don't know. You know, <laughs> it might be that heavy side direct snap. Uh, oh, look at yeah, that. Look here we that. go. It's worked worked very well for the Comets tonight. It's coming this way. Direct snap floor. I think they're going to give it to him, Coach. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's wanting to. Yeah, that's a first down. Yeah, he he drives those legs. He hits that point of contact, and like you said, he's falling forward. But it's not just falling; he's driving forward. Well, I know Coach Adams will not be happy with that. Picking up a third and 17. So fresh set of downs here with a minute 18 and counting for the comments. Direct snap to Byers. He's going to throw this one. He's just going to be a little off on that one. <laughs> he is obvious that Byers is not a quarterback. And we're going to run to that one. So that'll bring up a quick second and 10 for the comments. That's one of those shots that you tell your. You tell your guy, if they're not wide open, just uh, just toss it down there. See if they let Big Byers give another shot throwing the football. That's motion again by, it's so frustrating as a, as a coach, it's one thing if you're one of your interior linemen jumps, but when the wideouts jump, it's very, very frustrating. If, well, you, don't, if you don't remember the count, just look in and look. Um, what about know, when it's a quarterback playing wideout, coach? Because that's what that was. That was Paulson mm -hmm. over here. That's even worse, right? <laughs> he's he's got to know the count as much as anybody. So that'll cost him five more to bring up. Puts them in a similar position they had in that third and 17. That now was second a, and 15. That was a, I guess that's just five. Yeah, second and 15. He's going to run it up in there. He killed his own guy. Well, we, Xavier Freeman almost tore that out of his hands and he would have scored. <laughs> I think the Chargers are going to burn one now, looks like, because we've got about a third and 17 again. Yeah, timeout Chargers with 59 seconds to go here. Hoping to maybe get another crack at it with a few seconds here in the half. <laughs> Unfortunately, the friendly fire right there from number seven about killed his own guy. It cannot have felt good, coach. You're sitting there trying to set up a block, and yeah. big man comes right down, right down the back, and, and takes you out there. That's, that's a tough, that's a tough blow. You could have guessed they'd go back to a very similar look. It was a similar situation to third and 17. That direct snap to Byers, trying to hit one of those inside a gaps, and. Chargers were much more prepared that time. I don't know if our fans can hear, but that wind is really picking up right now. Tickling that microphone a little bit. You know, we've had a wonderful, as we usually do this time of year, it's been a wonderful week, weekend, Friday and Thursdays of football weather. Pretty warm, but 
This is the first really windy night we've had. It really is. Yeah. You're right. Speaking of great weather, God, last weekend in all parts of the South. Boy, how lucky is it to that? You go, you guys go down to that OU Texas deal every every year. That's usually about a hundred. It was got, got lucky this year, didn't you? Wearing pants and a collared shirt could not be more comfortable. All right, so third and seventeen again. Third, and, yeah, it's it's more than fifteen. The scoreboard says it's it's about third and seventeen or eighteen here. Got the regular quarterback back in. See what we do here. Come, it's going to roll right. Off now, going to roll right. So now it's incomplete, so we don't have to take a timeout. Let's see what the uh, – there's a flag down. Oh, my goodness, roughing the passer. Can't do that. Is that on Eddie Johnson? I, I can't tell. Can't either. I say that because he was close to the play at the time, but – Knowing Coach Adams, it's very likely on the person no longer on the field. Coach Bogert uh, not happy with that call. So that's going to give him a free 15, and not, we're probably not getting the ball back now for in this half. Ball just inside the Charger 35-yard line. Coach, I think the third time now they've been inside our 35, but they haven't moved past the 30, I don't think. No. So... Byers going to take the direct snap again. Direct snap, Byers. Picks up about three. But Ganya body. First contact there. Xavier Freeman been all over the place tonight. And, yeah, I saw Charlie getting up there. I think might be our first Hillman Brown sighting on the D-line. Yeah, Hillman, great looking young junior. Oh, Clark is maybe going to score if he catches that. And ironically, if he doesn't get a hand on it, Gerard Williams may have scored the other way. Yeah. So that stops the clock, brings up a third and seven with 22 seconds left here in the first half. It is quite the young cheerleader show out here, fans. I wish you guys could see it. It's unbelievable how many young shooters they have on the track right now. That's, that's pretty impressive. Okay, third and seven here. 22 seconds to go. Got the traditional quarterback in there. Paulson on the rollout. Oh, there we go. Now we got a view of those little cheerleaders. Absolutely fantastic showing. Bunch of them. One last shot here. 16 seconds to go in the half. Last chance. Uh, unless they pick up a first here. Fourth and about six for the Comets. No, Coach, that's the third or fourth time they've played the bell on their own fourth down on offense. That's an interesting move. Knock it down, knock it down. Oh my goodness, wow. what in the world? <laughs> we were sitting there waiting on that and, and then the, maybe the wind took it and misjudged it, hit Clark right in the chest. <laughs> They're going to have first down right there with about two shots at it, but that's going to bring up first down for the Chargers. Let's see what Coach Bogart has in mind here with just 11 ticks on the clock in the first half here. Chargers up 29-0. Seems like one of those situations that you, you run your, your read option, your mesh point in the backfield, or see if you can break one. If not, you just kind of take it into half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Not gonna well, that's going to end the half. That did end the half. Jordan on the reverse dropped it and went the other way and still picked up 50. But that will end the half. Much improved Dixon Comet squad. 
Chargers lead at 29 nothing as we'll go to the half. We'll be right back with third quarter action in a few minutes. The secret to settling your IRS debt in times of inflation and recession is simple. Together we'll show them they won't collect it all in time. So cut us a deal now. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24 seven for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. What does it cost to settle my IRS debt for good? As always, Travis Watkins Tax offers a low fixed rate and will let you pay it out over time. Call or visit Travis Watkins Tax today to find out more. All right, Charger fans, so as you guys can see there on the scoreboard, we got sitting at 29 nothing. Chargers headed into halftime. As Coach Chard and I were both talking about, uh, much improved Dixon team tonight. Um, their offense is one that you don't see every day, a little bit harder to prepare for. You know, as, as you talk about not exactly the triple option that the armies and air forces and such used to run, but it's the same same situation where it's not an offense that you prepare for day in and day out. And so kind of got to figure out how to get those looks, right? They're, they're, they're very creative on how they're getting the ball to their backs. Um, both number five and number seven having great games so far as far as rushing the ball. Uh, both finding some spots on the inside. Again, number five, Jalen Clark uh, on pace for about 30, 32 carries tonight, and Ethan Byers probably on pace for the high teens, low 20s in carries. Both have been able to break a couple of good-sized runs, especially in some big situations, third downs, fourth downs. And again, the coaching staff over at Dixon, led by Matt Sufall, uh, really finding creative ways to get those guys the ball in the backfield. Uh, they haven't asked Colby Paulson, the sophomore quarterback, to do much through the air. And, and when he has, the Chargers have blanketed it pretty well. But, again, Dixon is, I say, staying in the game. But, but moving the ball between the 30s, at least, uh, to a decent extent. Um, the Chargers and Mark Adams, Coach Mark Adams, had to switch to a little bit of a four down, even front look. Uh, usually a three, three, five stack team. That's kind of a different look for the Chargers. So I feel like something they've been practicing, you could tell that they are ready to use it. But something different for the Chargers to, to go to on defense. Again, good for the Chargers to see something they don't usually see. And, and kudos to Dixon for being as creative as they've been offensively to get the ball where they want it into their best players. We say all that, and again, the Chargers are still up 29 nothing at half. Uh, off of some big time plays, Barrett Travis has accounted for three total touchdowns, two rushing and one passing. The one passing to quarterback Andy Bass, uh, about a 70-ish yard pass play off a little trick play. And then we have another 70-ish yard pass play to Rashad Smith for a touchdown. Kept Rashad Smith's touchdown streak alive for the season. He has had one in now seven straight games. Jordan Harris has been oh so close to getting his touchdown, both on the interception to start the game and then on that late botched reverse that went back to the near sideline, the Chargers sideline that picked up about 50 yards. Uh, he's about one and a half guys away from breaking that one for a touchdown. The Chargers, again, living in on explosive plays, haven't had to sustain many drives. Their first field was short due to the interception and then some explosive plays. There's a good shot down the field of all the little Comet cheerleaders. I'm not sure if that's exactly what they're called, so we're going to call them for this segment. And golly, there are a lot of them. Again, having a three-year-old at home, that's an exciting thing for this coach to look forward to, see my daughter future on the field at a football game. And I think that might be a strong contingent of the fans down here as I see them all 
with their phones out filming and getting ready for this performance by these small common cheerleaders. Quick uh, recap of that first half. Now we're gonna look at our replays now. Here's Paulson rolling out. It's gonna be that early interception by Jordan Harris. He takes it down the Chargers sideline, takes it inside the five, giving those Chargers the short field. Sitting here in our three back A form formation. Hand off to Barrett Travis, as Coach Chard and I talked about. That's something that's hard to, to run or to defend for anybody that plays the Chargers. You saw in that touchdown run, 88, having to pick whether he was going against Andy or Barrett. Back to our replays. Look at some big plays from the first half. Here we have our toss play and throwback. Yeah, that is a forward throw out to 3A sprint champion Andy Bass. And once he crossed the 40, those next 60 weren't close. Andy's worked on that running form immensely over the last couple springs in track and with personal trainers, he's just gotten faster and faster. Here on the defensive side, again, Dixon rolling out Paulson, this time to his left. And Rashad stays home, doesn't get taken out in his co outside of his coverage lane and gets that easy interception. The Chargers were called for a crackback block in this play, which made this touchdown just that much longer as we hit Rashad on a deep, deep, about 20 yard hitch. And he spins out at the first tackle and runs to pay dirt for his touchdown in his seventh straight game. Again, we watch as 88 has to have quarterback responsibility and we block it well up front on the left side and Barrett Travis runs to a close to a 60 yard touchdown, which I believe was our last one of the half, putting the score, helping it get to 29 nothing as he and Jordan Harris celebrate in the end zone. Here's our semi botch reverse. Look, we had great blocking on the front side. Might have been something that we took home all the way for a touchdown, but Jordan Harris gets from the 30 all the way to the opposing 25, so 45, sorry, 55 yard gain on that reverse. And we could show back to our little common cheerleaders here dancing to Barbie World. That's a song from my youth. Oh. Now we're switching, they don't know what to do. They're a little caught off guard, we're in silence here. Crowd goes wild for them. Some encouragement from their parents here in the crowd. Not easily 50 cell phones out filming. As we watch little comments out in the midfield. As I'm not, no longer a math teacher like I used to be, so I'm not even gonna try to count how many, but you know, I'm gonna exaggerate and say there's hundreds. There's not, but it's more fun to talk about. There, there may be, there may be a hundred. I'd say we're probably safe at 75 to 80. That was a throwback, throwback here in the Barbie World song. I haven't heard that song in quite a while. Must have made a comeback as Barbie was outrageously popular over the summer as a movie in theaters. We get our littlest ones heading off the field here. Looks like some of the older ones might stay. And I'll be honest, fans, I, I didn't think I'd be ever commentating some cheerleading, but happy to do so. Maybe maybe some practice as I move forward in Sloan's life. While we're here at halftime, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about some Charger sports. Um, I'll take the time before we recognize some more fall sports Take the time to talk about the two basketball teams. Uh, boys and girls basketball both kicked, well, kicked off, tipped off their season on October 3rd. Uh, that we're each eight practices in to our to our seasons. And new new head coach for the girls, Olivia Nixon, we were able to get from Westmore High School. Uh, really looking for her to do some special things as she takes over the girls program after a, a few years stint from Parker Castle. And 
the girls return some some good some good talent on their side. Girls bring back uh, La senior Laney Portman, juniors Reagan, and uh, sorry, excuse me, Reagan Fowler and Marley Moore, along with senior Nevaeh Johnson. They add some uh, freshman talent coming in, uh, bring back some sophomores and some juniors as well. Uh, the boys squad lost most of most of who played for them last year, right? Your, your top leading, top three, or two of your top three scores. They do return their second leading scorer in Rashad Smith. And we also return our sixth man from last year, Thad Butler, and our backup five, who backed up Cooper Cooks at the five in Carter Knowles. Uh, Rashad Smith and Carter Knowles both out here on the football field. Rashad Smith, we saw him with a big interception followed by a big touchdown on that broken tackle. And Carter Knowles, we've seen out there in the slot playing the pass catching Y to Rhett Davis's blocking and play action Y position. And we've seen them both out on the field tonight, and they'll be joining basketball. Those three actually be joining basketball, hopefully, no sooner than December 3rd. And we'll also have Barrett Travis joining as well from the football field, along with possibly Jordan Harris and, and some other Chargers in addition to those. In basketball right now, we've got, like I said, Thad Butler is in there. Jackson Carter is in the gym um, from the senior spots. Britt uh, Malurb and Roman Welch. Some juniors leading the way along with Terrence Brown. Uh, helping, helping lead the way in the gym. We've got some talented sophomores in the gym and, and quite a group of incoming freshmen in the gym as well. Um, we're very, very excited. It'll be a young team, but a team that will have a chance to surprise some people and, and have a lot of fun this season and, you know, probably be in some games that we don't know we shouldn't be in and probably pull out those games because we got some talent. Uh, the team looks to work really, really hard and, they all came in this morning to practice so they could come down here and into Dixon and support tonight. We're going to take a break real quick as the Dixon band hops on the field, and we will be back soon. Eight minutes left in the half. Miller Tippins is an award-winning commercial construction company specializing in building relationships. Our mission is to improve the lives of the people we serve. Exceptional work requires an exceptional team. No matter the scale of your project, we are committed to delivering excellence from our owner-driven team with over 100 years of combined experience. Let us be your A-team. Miller Tippins, your champions of commercial construction. Welcome back, Charger fans. Chargers uh, up 29 nothing here at half. You know, I'm, I'm sure they're not ecstatic with with some of that with some of the play, but you also got to tip your hat to the Comets. Uh, pretty physical group, and and they found a few creases here and there with their two good running backs in that in that first half, and were able to pick up. I don't have them in front of me. Six or seven first downs anyway, and and. Uh, so you know, like I said at the at the at the end of play in the second quarter, the Chargers or excuse me, the Comets, a much improved team from last year. I mean, they were having trouble getting plays off last year. Uh, while we listen to the uh, Comet band in the background, a couple more Charger. Uh, Sports occurrence is going on. The Charger Cross Country team raced their final regular season meet earlier the week all the way down in Walrika. Boys finished third as a team placed by, paced by senior Will Blaylock with a fifth place individual finish. The girls did not qualify for team placement with just four runners. But Coral Grimmett placed 11th and Zephy Ellenberg finished 23rd out of almost 200 runners from 32 schools. That's a really big meet. And uh, those are two young girls with bright, bright futures athletically, not just in, in, in uh, cross country. 
A week from today, the JV runners will compete at the Norman Festival. And on Saturday, October 21st, the Chargers will race in regionals. I think Coach Solomon told me we'll find out the location of that, either be back down to Warrica or up in our usual spot in Chisholm up near Enid for regionals next Saturday with hopes to qualify for state a week later and get out and support our runners in the postseason. Also, Charger Esports had another great week. In a program first, the team of Gideon Williams, Carson Kerr, Savion Sullivan, Finn Ryan, and Noah Ram posted the first ever regular season win in Halo this week. Rocket League is looking great again. The 3v3 team is ranked second in the state and 10th nationally after two weeks of regular season play. Follow the esports team on Instagram at The Hall Esports and subscribe to the Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash The Hall Esports to watch live. That's a lot there. Um, so as we get here, we sit here week seven, we set the stage for you for the, the remainder of the regular season. Uh, as we mentioned, next week we'll be getting on a bus and coming back down I-35. We'll turn right at Ardmore instead of left this time and go to Plainview. Beautiful facility there with turf and nice place to play. If you've been to a track meet down there, Plainview is a, a big track school and a, and a successful athletic program. Plainview will, will be uh, ready for the Chargers. And then week nine, we will come back. Our late homecoming this year. Week nine, we'll be homecoming. Hope to uh, – can't wait to see some of my old buddies. And it's a, it's a, it's a class reunion from <clears throat> a lot of years ago. And uh, – but we'll uh, – We'll meet some friends, some old friends, and, and, and play Sulphur Bulldogs in homecoming. And then week 10, wrap it up also at home, senior night versus Marlowe Outlaws in what will probably be the official district championship game, which is what you love in week 10. You know, we, we didn't win eight, st eight state titles without a lot of talent running through here. And um, there's a lot of Charger alumni still playing football, as we know some at the pro level and several at the college level or who just finished their college career. Um, Sterling Shepard, we all know Sterling played for the Sooners his eighth year in the league. Um, he's had a slow start. He's returning from a, a torn ACL from last season. He's battled some injuries, but um, he will start at the Buffalo Bills game versus the Bills this Sunday. It's an NBC night game, so maybe we'll see Sterling in that game. A lot of you may remember Billy Ross, a 19 grad, went to Emporia State and had an amazing athletic career still going. And uh, this season has 91 carries for over 400 yards, five touchdowns, 16 catches. Um, and they will play Washburn. That's a really competitive D2 league in Kansas and Missouri. Um, he's had a great career. Now, I know he's run some track as well. Good to see Philip Smitherman on the board here. A senior at Harvard. Yes, that Harvard in Boston, Cambridge, has six tackles and one forced fumble this year. Uh, they will play on ESPN2 versus Howard University. Uh, this Saturday, so chance to see one of the one of my favorite high school athletes, a three-sport true star at Heritage Hall, Philip Smitherman. Will Dunn playing his ball up in South Dakota. He's all the way up to 6'3", 300 pounds playing D-tackle. Has a couple tackles in week one at Missouri, and they'll play a tough Youngstown State team this com coming up this week on ESPN+. Plus. One of our all-time favorites again. These guys are all great. Melvin Swindle plays at Eastern Michigan, as many of you know. Uh, has 13 tackles so far this year, which may not sound like a lot, but at the D-line at the college level, that's a that's a lot. And I know he rotates in there. They play Kent State, uh, the Golden Eagles, this week coming up on CBS uh, Sports this Saturday. So a lot of TV games with our former Chargers involved. Robert Embro, 21 grad, plays it up at the Air Force Academy in Colorado Springs. Um, he has played in three games this year and, rec and has is in on one tackle. They play a tough Wyoming squad this week on CBS Sports Network. Jaden Williams, still on the roster, redshirt sophomore at Missouri Western State. Had a couple carries this year. Uh, not active right now, and plays North, they play Northwest Missouri State. Our man Gavin Freeman, who we've referenced a few times, he has 11 catches this year for the number five ranked team in the United States, the Oklahoma Sooners, for 62 yards, one touchdown, eight punt returns for 114 yards an 82-yarder for a touchdown against Arkansas State. Sooners off this week to get healed up from that amazing great win over the – I'm not calling that a long – it's not an upset either. Sooners won. They were the better team, and it was wonderful to watch. They will be back in action in Norman a week from Saturday versus UCF in an 11 o'clock game on ABC. Gavin Wilson ran into Grayson, his big brother, the other night, and Gavin 
still playing for UCO, and what a great uh, switch that kid did from an interior lineman to playing tight end and H-back at the college level. It's usually the other way around. You play a little tight end H-back in high school, and they put 20 pounds on you, say so put your hand in the dirt. It went the other way with Gav Wilson, and, and he's a great player still playing for the Broncos up in Edmond. River Faulkner and Cooper Cookson, both, they are officially Oklahoma Sooners. They are suiting up and putting the gear on. They're not going to play just yet, but they have made the suit squad and are getting a uniform. I was so cool. I was at the Iowa State game a couple weeks ago and looked down in the linebacker group warming up. There's number 37, River Faulkner, doing form tackling. And what a thrill to put the crimson and cream on for any young Oklahoma high school football player. And then Ori Walker, another three-sport star here at Heritage Hall. Is uh, on the freshman is a freshman at Oklahoma State did walk on. He has not made the game day roster yet on the practice squad, but he's I know he's had some really good practices at wide receiver. Given and I know he scored once on the first D up in Stillwater. So that's a that's a laundry list of, of great players. And there's a you know there's several players on this team that we'll be talking about on that list going forward. Talking about Xavier Freeman and obviously uh, our quarterback Andy Bass. Uh, Jordan Harris. Uh, there's a lot of guys that are going to play some college football on this team and some young kids who, who, who knows what they'll do uh, with tons of potential, whether that's uh, some of our young defensive backs in that crew. So uh, a lot to look forward to here. We're about two minutes from, from action to start the third quarter here in Dixon. Chargers are 29-0. We'll be back with the start of the second half right after this. lakes, farm ponds, and creeks. And whether you take a highway or a dirt road to get there, Joe Cooper Jeep gets you to your destination. Right now, buy any Jeep for 10% below employee pricing. Plus, Joe Cooper always gives you more for your trade-in. And remember, we'll beat any dealer's price on a new Jeep by $500, or we'll give you $10,000. Only here at Joe Cooper. Who loves you, Oklahoma? All right, Charger fans, just tuning in. The Chargers are out to a comfortable 29-0 lead. But as I said, you know, we want to, we know we're the home team announcers, but we want to be uh, fair and, and give credit where credit is due. And the there's been a, a drastic improvement um, by this Dixon Comet team from a year ago, where it was uh, it was just a you know, a, a bludgeoning last year at, at Pop Murray Field in Oklahoma City. So the Chargers have gotten on a bus, and for two weeks in a row, this is kind of the, the grinder part of the season. We're going to go 100 miles two weeks in a row to, to play ball in the southern part of Oklahoma in our district, 3A2. And and uh, I'm sure, you know, you're going to see the first team here, I imagine, and and uh, I'm sure the, the Comets are, are somewhat energized by their – uh, positive offensive performance. I know they've got over 100 yards of offense in this first half, and you know, last year they didn't have 50 in the game, and and uh, till the very very end against some of our young young kids, and uh, so yeah, improved group from from Dixon, and the Chargers will receive to open the third quarter here. Haven't obviously haven't seen the Comets kick off until now, so we'll see what they have in mind. They'll obviously kick with the wind. Seventy-two percent of his, seventy-two percent of his throws for just shy of fifteen hundred yards, and then a nineteen-to-one touchdown to interception ratio. Sounds coming, like Brock Purdy, right? Yeah. Uh, well, you know, and those stats are misleading in the fact that they would probably be double that if we, you know, he doesn't play a whole lot. Doesn't. You know, last couple weeks he's played one possession of the third quarter, and uh, I think we might see a little more of him tonight. Certainly going to see him right here and uh, see if we can, you know, it's it's a it's a awkward night to, to play. It's it's very very windy, um, 
you know, there's a short little tap there. Run it. Yeah, get through there and go. Oh, ooh, right around the head. Stay clear of the face mask, it looks like. Yeah. Gerard Williams on the return. But good job by Gerard not thinking, oh my gosh, I have to fair catch that. Great job being a being the baller he is to say, heck, you want to kick it right to me, I'm going to run. And run he can do, as I mentioned earlier. Let off our 4x1, four 4x2, by four by and 4x4 four four relays at all how, scored How points. those guys do? Oh, they scored a few points on the way to a state championship. 4x1, four school record, 4x2, four school record, 4x4, four four, top six in the school history. So here we go. We've got tied in, two tight ends in the game. Excuse me, one with uh, Rhett Davis. More conventional formation. Travis to the left and we'll take the handoff and he's gonna go. He's gotta see him, is he gonna get through there? Absolutely untouched. 57 yard touchdown to start the half. As a, an old buddy of mine used to say, my headset squelch wasn't even adjusted and they have a touchdown. That's what happens in the old days when you play the Jinx Trojans. Uh, so 11, <laughs> let me do my quick math here. 14 seconds into the half, it's 35 to nothing. So I think, uh, Knowing our excellent football staff pretty well, I don't think it was uh, pass around the French fries at halftime. Little plug for your Charger track team. Barrett Travis came out for the first time last spring to double up with soccer, and he was already fast, but he got just a little bit faster there, Coach. Into the wind, I mean, he looks good, you know. And I, you know, when you have a guy like Andy Bass who gets statewide and even national mention, and you know, he's going to go play for OU. That's that's that is significant at a three A school. It's not something you see every day. And but don't don't sleep on Barrett Travis, just a junior. Um, he's got the goods. He's gotten taller. He's he's gotten so much stronger this year. And uh, you know when we get into the playoffs, you got to play us straight when we run the read because if you're going to all lean to Andy Bass, he'll give it to the other kid and he'll burn you. And uh, that's that's just one more reason we're going to be hard to beat. It's exciting, but you know we don't have to use we don't have to be like the Jinx guys, Coach Sullivan, because we're not coaching them. Right. So we can talk about the state championship and all that. And we need we're excited to have a great chance to get back to that game. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'll be real honest. 3A across the board is not as good as some years. Right. Um, I think we realize that up in Tulsa, Lincoln Christian has got it going again. They got a great returning kid. I forget his name, quarterback, and he's got six, 8,000 yards in his career. So um, different kind of offense. He's not nearly as multi-dimensional as Andy Bass, but a heck of a player, good program as we know. Lincoln Christian has beaten us a few times. And so um, there's that, but you know what? I think I, I know Marlowe is chomping at the bit to have a chance mm -hmm. to come to Heritage Hall and win a district championship week 10. Um, you know, I know that's in the back of their mind and coach Matt Weber and them do a great job and they'll be ready for that. So, you know, a lot of great football coming up uh, for your Chargers. 36 nothing here, one play and uh, one touchdown here in the third quarter. Is that a Bo Butler back kicking off? Yes, sir, it is. All right. Go deep on side here. They're just going to kick away. What well, great kick by Bo right there. Deeper than those Stay kids in, yep. thought. Good. Mm. Oh, he hit him right in the <laughs> two. <laughs> They're drilling us right in the back, but you know, whatever. We're not, it's okay. Good return there. Back to the 31 yard line. You know, coach, you talked about staying, staying honest on that read, that read option. You've got a quarterback who's averaging over 14 yards a carry this year. And you have a running back who's averaging almost six yards a carry, which is nothing short of well, that's very going, That's very going good. up after tonight. Yeah, and, and we've <laughs> seen him have two carries, and on those two touchdown carries, he's averaging just about 55 yards per carry. Okay, so the uh, Comets have the ball into their boundary here. Similar formation we've seen all evening, offset eye to the quick side and the the wing set to the uh, to the field there with the tight end. Number 12 back in there at QB, not the direct snap that we saw towards the end of the half, but I know we will before the half's out, I'm sure. Boy, great job right there. Cool. 
had, had a card picked up there in the uh, old reverb, huh? Yeah. You know, Coach, I, I'm going to let the audience in on something. I just got my headset plugged in that much better. I can hear out of both ears now. It's changed my world. <laughs> Graham Murphy on that last tackle got low on him and got him on the ground. No gain. Inside handoff to Carter. Not a bad pickup there, about three yards. Four maybe, gonna bring up a third and five for the Comets. Jalen Carter is a handful. We'd adjusted our secondary there for a bit. We had Boston Fuller in for Gerard Williams. He, he had been out ever since that hit on that opening yeah. kickoff. Yeah. Good to see him back in there. You know, we rotated that mic position after yeah, since Cal unfor Lowry. Unfortunately, I don't see Cal back in there, so that's I don't know any injury report. But drop back to pass here. Too high. For Casas, that's going to bring up fourth down. See what the Comets decide to do. Looks like they're going to bring in the punt team. Looked like Paulson tried to look off his safeties a little bit there. Came off the snap, looked back to the left, went back to the right. To that Whatever, yeah, he did everything right, but get yeah, it to exactly, him. He was open. Exactly. Not not bad mechanics and, and bad and good schematics there. He just couldn't execute the throw. Was that more of a, an out or an arrow, Coach? That was an arrow, out route by yep. 88, yep. Casas. No, it's a good job. Everything was good, just a little high and outside. Playing for the return. That's a, a wobbler going to bounce. No, we don't want that one. Terrence going to look at that one, let her go dead to the 23-yard line where the Chargers will take over. 10.03 to go in the in the uh, third quarter. 36-0, Chargers on top. That punt right there, and, and when Terrence started inching his way, gladly he didn't, made me think of the USC game. <laughs> Did you see that USC yeah. game when they tried to throw the returner into the ball? Yes. Now you coach football. I didn't. I just played a little bit. Is that even? Is that allowed? Well, you're gonna say I don't know what you're talking about. I just blocking the guy. Right. right? right. <laughs> uh, so as we thought, Andy, Andy, and the starters all back in there. We'll probably motion out of this A frame. I would imagine that's what we've done most of the uh, this week and last. There we go. That's Carter Knowles flipping sides, quads to the top of the screen there. Oh, number 20. Well read, well diagnosed. Great job. Good job holding on to the football there by Carter Knowles. That was number 20, Xander Schreiber, junior linebacker. He read that the whole way, and we didn't have anybody that got in his way. Loss of four there. Be second 14 for the Chargers. You know, it's it's a tall order to throw it in this mess for anybody. Conventional trips down here. Swing out to Travis. It's the 29. Gets about 10 of that back. About yeah. Gonna bring up third and about five. Uh, got some scat motion. That wasn't a hold. Okay. You know it's a, uh, a new age of football, not new anymore, but we're in a new age of football when we say standard trips. Yeah. Now, you know, old to me, standard trips is a, a conventional tight end in trips. Right. But that was trips open, right. you know, like we see so much on Saturday and Sunday. and uh, Makes you think of, uh, remember the Titans, who you think they are, the New York yeah, Jets? Yeah, that's right. Getting the shotgun. Yeah. So let's see what we got here on third and a five. Good job by the Comets in this series. Oh, good defense there. Yeah, that was number four, Caleb Cassis. Yeah, that was intended for Rhett Davis. See what the Chargers do here. Fourth and five. Looks like they may stay on the offense and go for it on the 29-yard line. I think they will. We have seen Andy quick kick it out of this, but into the win, I don't see any reason to do that. No, they're playing. If they'll stay with this trips bunch. That's how we're gonna pass the middle. Good well, job there. Great throw and catch there. Rashad Smith and Andy Bass hook it up to pick up a big first down there. 
Yeah, that's nice play. Nice, really nice play. Keeping the nose of that ball down and throwing and cutting it right through the wind. Nice ball. First and ten Chargers. And great play design. You had Fuller on the little flood route out of the outside of that trips formation yeah, and, and drug drug the corner out with them and curled right inside of it. And you can you know it's you can always run you know kind of a pick out of that stuff whether you mean to or not. There's different pitch to Andy Bass. Reverses field. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I think it's a shoulder pad, coach. <laughs> I tell you what, it gets funny down here. We, uh, now that was fun. That was Barrett Travis yeah. under center. Yeah, all kinds of stuff. Well, who knows what we're going to see Andy play in college, but uh, maybe a little bit of that right lot, there. Lot, he could do a lot of things. About a 15 yard pickup there by Andy. May or may not have had a face mask. And, so Chargers in Comet territory at about the 48 yard line. Back to Andy at QB out of the gun. Great throw oh. into the wind. Oh, just too long. Yeah, we I, I don't know if Jordan had a good eye, you know, sight lines on that ball, because I know he would have come towards the post more. Looked like he would, and maybe he didn't catch, pick it up early enough. To have that tight of spiral hold into the wind like that, Coach, it's a good throw. Well, I think he can play that position in college. I really do. There's, a, there's a, that, what I, I'm not going to give the verbiage that the Chargers use, but that's what I'd call a laser package. They have a right and a left name for that, which we're not going to say on the air, but. Um, always success, successful because, you know, our, our receivers, which you know this from playing, if you want to be any good, your receivers better block on the perimeter. And, and that's kind of a prerequisite here for these Chargers. They do a great job of that. Play is always a good go-to uh, into the boundary works the best because then the, the, the tackle from that side can get out there and really help. There's a naked by Andy Bass. Going to get through there for another about 15 yards. Good job by Rashad Smith not – Holding right there and, and, and holding his block. Down to the Comet 18 yard line goes Andy. You know, it's gotta be fun. Coach Bogart has tons of weapons, tons of formations. Gotta be fun to be able to run all that, but kudos to Coach Bogart. You can only run all this stuff all the time if you teach it well. Yeah, it's fun to sit in the office and have all this stuff, but you can, as we both know, it's not what you know, it's what you can teach them. And, and our kids are sponges, they love it. And because Coach Bogart and them keep it fun, trips, same what we just talked about, trips into the boundary there. Yeah, 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 Rashad. That a baby. As he spins his way into the end zone. Great path by Rashad Smith. And that was, you guys, we just talked about it. That is a wonderful look at that play, at the angles that is necessary. You catch it towards the boundary and then you come back into the field and you're coming just, you're almost, as long as you don't run into each other, which we never do, it's a thing of beauty. They're coming one way to block and you're running right off their tail and, and that's how it works on the chalkboard. I mean, that was perfect. That was perfect. And the first guy to give a high five to Rashad Smith as he came off the field was one and only Gavin Freeman sporting his brother's number 55 Oh yeah, there he is. <laughs> he did that last week. Yes, he did. Yeah, we, we were thinking it was Friday last week, and we were also worried about OU Texas. Gavin, what are you doing here? And he says, well, it's only Thursday, Coach. <laughs> Snap back and held, and Cal Welker puts it through. I I love Cal. He's one of our favorites in the building, and I keep wanting to call him Lee or Wes. <laughs> There's a good look at old Gav, punt returner for the Oklahoma Sooners. I told him the other day, I said, man, they're making you put your hand in the dirt with 55. <laughs> but that's not going to happen with Gavin Freeman, as you saw Coach Cafeller there. Good look at Coach Adams and Mr. Freeman there. <laughs> yeah, the sky's the limit for Gavin. You know, he's playing behind a, a fifth-year senior in Drake Stoops, who's obviously doing a great job. And and who knows, with you know, dealing with some injuries to the receiving core for OU, who knows if we might see a little more of Gavin, mm -hmm. you know, and open it up. You know, he often runs that, that jet sweep and, and returns punts. and and we all know he can run routes and catch it, and, and so do the Sooners. I'm not questioning that. He's gonna get his turn, I know it, sooner sooner than later for OU. And, you know, it's classic Gavin. He, he looks all baggy and everything, 
the guy is as yoked up as I've ever seen a kid in yes, my life. Yes. I don't know. These are fun, you know, legendary stories to tell about our great players, but one day I walked in the weight room and he's got that chain link thing around his neck. neck yep, exactly. Well, it's, around, it's actually hooked to a belt, and on the belt, the chain link's on the neck, and then the belt, he's got a 55-pound dumbbell on that, and he's doing dips. And he's just talking to me like he's standing there sitting down having a cheeseburger. Right. He's like, what's up, coach? And he's, he's doing dips with all that weight on him. I said, <laughs> I was just, you know, kind of watching it. Uh, he's a, a phenomenal, phenomenal athlete. Bob Butler back in to take the kicking duties and drills it. God, what a great kick there, Bo, to the seven-yard line. Carter gets it. Nice. First uh, to the action there on that tackle was Klein Reuter. Klein can move it. Now he got, I'm glad to see Klein back out there. He had some concussion action and, and now he's been cleared to go and, and uh, I know he was chomping at the bit to play. Klein's got a great future. He can, he can run. Yes, he does. And yes, he can. He said he's gonna try to be one of those guys to do Dual sport uh, track and baseball this spring. Really? I've never seen a guy that's, do, do that's those two sports. That's a little sports. different since baseball plays about every day. Yes, it is. We'll see how it goes. Okay, back to action. Just outside their own 20, Comets will see what they got here. The same, same formation and hand off to Carter going around the left side. That's not going to work. Now he's going to turn his field. He's going to lose even more yardage. Carter Counts was a pest on that play. Finished up by Rashad yeah, Smith. Yeah, you, you know, we're the – you cannot run wide on the Chargers. We've seen them crease us a few times. And, you know, Coach, that's where you – that's where you attack that odd stack. If you've got a little bit of physicality, there are – even if you're fitting it right, we're not overly big at linebacker. That's where you – that's where you get after the Chargers if you, if you think you can. Right. And even schematically, the odd stack lends itself – to some gaps. Right. You have three down linemen instead of four or five. And, and I know Mark has a four and a five package, but it's hard to beat us doing that. It is. It'll be hard for anyone to, and that's why I, I like the odd stack. It's so many. There's no holes. Bladen Vogel on the heat. On the heat. Grant Murphy slowed him up just enough for Bear Travis to come help. Yeah, so the complete to Byers for just a, a small pickup there on the boot to the right side. Brings up about third and about 13 after the big loss on first down. You know, Coach, back to your point, they've moved the ball a little bit between the 30s, mm -hmm. but then it stops. Right? You, you can't just beat us that way. You might get some yards here and there, but it's going to be hard. you got to do it consistently really, really well and do it better than us, and I, that's just going to be really hard to do for anybody. No, it is. I, 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 I haven't done my homework. I will when get towards the playoffs more about more of an east side Contenders, I, I unfortunately for Vertigris, I have some really good buddies that coach up there, and they are not as good as they were last year. They were, they were formidable in the semis yes, for a were. while. Yes, they were. Very physical, well coached, but I, I think they're having a, a tougher year this year. And of course, we mentioned Lincoln already. I, I don't know who else is. Uh, you know, Metro's pretty solid. They're not bad. They uh, lost to Perkins, right? They did. Yeah. They did, and I, I talked to Coach Boger about them a little bit, and he said they're one of those teams that. Is not what they were, obviously. They lost quite a few players, but they still have that, that offense that can, can mm -hmm. bite you if you're not ready. Well, I, I went to a Tulsa game a few weeks ago. My son was working for ESPN and on the on some doing some techno stuff for him. And I uh, saw the Francis kid on the sideline looking good for Tulsa. He did not play. You know, he's just a freshman. But uh, he's a scho he signed as a scholarship player at Tulsa. That guy could throw it. He can absolutely whip it. Here's the score in 3A2 for you. Sulphur up 34 nothing on Lone Grove. Uh, here's a fake punt, and he's going to get it. Darren Jolly knocks him out on the 49. Like, like you said earlier, Coach, why not, right? Why not? I, I guess. I, if you're going to just play, just play, but it worked. I mean, best player is going to get it. There's a good chance he's not punting it. Right. Right. So that gets them all the way to midfield with a new set of downs. Chargers up 43 nothing. In closer game, you got uh, Paul's Valley up 21-14 on our next opponent, Plainview. That's kind of a surprising score, Coach. Uh, yeah, I think there's a lot of they're, they're pretty similar down there in the middle. There's the inside handoff to Carter. He's going to get through there. Pick up of six. No, he's. 
That's He's gotta uh, be approaching near 100, right? Yeah, oh yeah. Jack Harris on the tackle there. And, you know, with a kid like five, you don't know who gets the worst of it. <laughs> But he's got their attention. It's good for our good for our guys to keep playing into the second half and get some get some more game reps. I mean, you know, last week, what are you supposed to do with Douglas? But getting a little more game reps here, and there's nothing wrong with that. Going to be a straight roll this time. Good job, Rhett. Oh, is that? Oh, that's Graham. Graham. Yeah, great job, Graham, knocking that down. Got the long wingspan, can really run. It's intended for Cassis. They, you know, they have those three players. Cassis, uh, number 88, and then seven and five. They, they are very creative in ways to get them the ball. Now again, it's, it amounted to so much, but they know who the three are and they're gonna get them the ball. Well, seven and 12 are out of the game on third and four, but Carter's not out of the game. <laughs> I wonder what's coming here. Bobbled it just for a second. Great job there. Jalen Clark. Yeah, I keep calling him. <laughs> so fourth and four, obviously a definite going to go for it here for the Comets. Again, like we talked about, though, between your 30s, ball moves a little bit, and then it, then it stalls out. Yards are only yards if you can't put points at the end. Super unbalanced again. Going to throw this one. It's supposed nope. to be a jump pass, but. First down, Chargers. You know, that's not a bad idea. Just send him, send him vertical. Don't try, just send right. him vertical. We don't right. really have him. Nobody was really on him. But he kind of stalled out on a kind of a soft out route right there. Just going, running 10 yards down the field would be a better chance. He's a big, tall kid. Yep. Chargers turn him over on downs again. And uh, that's the first unit coming out there, including Andy Bass. Yep. 43 to nothing. 427 to go in the third here in Dixon, Oklahoma. There's a handoff to Barrett Travis. Is he going to hit the, holy moly. <laughs> He's going to go cross country again. I think his per carry yardage has gone up a little tonight. Is that it's, fair? It's, it's gone up a little bit. I know he's had more than three carries, but on those three carries, <laughs> it's right around 55. <laughs> Goodness. And it's been that same that same crease on the left side between mm -hmm. your guard and your tackle. It's been, it's been really pretty. Well, we, we've talked about it already, but, you know, starting from the inside out, Grayson Hume, Eddie Johnston. Jack Harris, Charlie Gagne body, Xavier Freeman. Uh, and then with some David Griffin, he's kind of our jack of all trades in there. And, Eddie, and I mentioned Eddie, you know, they're intact and really understand what we're doing and, and do, they'll be a big reason why we'll get back in that game. Not very often do you bring back an entire state championship line. No. That hold is up and good. Cal Welker puts us at an even 50 for the ball game. That might be the last drive we see, but I, I, I can see us finishing the third quarter. 50 to nothing, Chargers on top. About what we expected. It vaulted from 29 to 50 in quite a hurry. <laughs> I think the wind's dying down, don't you, Coach? Yeah, you can't hear it at all. <laughs> can't hear yeah, it Yeah, this all. is a, uh, you know, like, one of those nights, uh, we're not going to have a running clock, I don't imagine. I mean, they can try, they can do that at any time, and I, I don't, who knows, I don't know what the Dixon coach, because both staffs have to agree with that. And You know, as a, talking to my guys, my buddies that are officials, that's always an awkward question to ask the coach getting hammered, who's probably not in a very good mood, do you want to have the running clock? Right. You know, it's like, do you want right. them to take a knee? It's kind of a degrading question, and nobody wants to be in that situation, but, uh, you know. As we line up to kick off, trying to fight through the wind here. There's chances. There's some more Ws on the on the schedule for Dixon, too. No, there are. Something to think about. They're going to beat Douglas, you know. Yeah. 
Bo Butler to set to kick. Chargers have had a great <coughs> third quarter here. And they lead it 50 to zip. You can't do the air horn. That's the train sound. <laughs> like you said, Coach. Uh-oh. Got a little corner here. Into the, He's out. Into the win. Bo's really giving it a pretty good ride. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he's got a great leg, and you know, hopefully he could be our guy for four years doing that. Cause, and Bo's a great player. He'll end up playing some linebacker, and, and you know, he's 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 a good player. Play a little bit of everything when he was in eighth grade. Yeah. I'll give it to the Dixon faithful. They cheer. They give. They're here for their team. Dixon will take over at their own 34. Uh, mostly still starters in there. And I mean, you know, it, you know, it's hard to, to, I'm not being critical, but it's hard to, you know, in any sport, certainly hoops and, and football, it's really kind of the onus is sort of on the, the team getting beat to sort of wave the white flag and put some other kids in. And because, you know, it's not super safe putting our ninth graders in trying to tackle number five. No, it's and, not. And I don't, they don't need that. And uh, he's still in the game. And that number seven is 240 pounds. I mean, you know, just physics alone. I know our kids aren't afraid, but. Yeah. Oh, great tackle there from the backside. Showalter. By Showalter, man. He's all over the place tonight. He is. No, Byers and Clark, tackling them is not for the faint of heart. They both bring quite the load with them, and, and you're going to have to be a, a practice a practice tackler to do it the right way. Got got Greg Keller in there on the nose at this stage, along with uh, that Hillman Brown Hillman there. and D at the five technique and Rhett Davis. So and we've, we've subbed in Griffin, the middle linebacker. There's Carter. That was Griffin just missing, but our cavalry showed up. Great job of pursuit. There by the rest of the fellas. Great shot by our Mike backer, David Griffin, right there. That's an alley right there. And a year from now, he will make that play. He will. And, and again, in those situations, he made him go outside, right? Rally, rally on the outside, make him push outside. Don't let him gap yeah. you in the middle. Once you turn your shoulders to the boundary, we got you. Exactly. So fourth down again, fourth and about two. See if the Chargers can hold them. I, I have a hunch it might be going to five. You know, you've been right most of the time. <laughs> it's really tough here, isn't it? <laughs> Let's go, Chargers. Hold them. Oh, Thanks darn it. Pass. Gaps yeah. it up the. Oh, oh, wow. Look at the closing speed by Carter Counts to keep him from a touchdown. And wow. the guy's trying to taunt him. I'm like, you just turn your head and run, you might have scored. Wow. Ran through a tackle from Terrence Johnson. Did Clark. But Carter counts on the other side corner, catches him across the field. <laughs> that was serious motor. Great job by Carter. 50 to nothing, you know, you're thinking. That's the kind of effort our coaches coach, right? You've been on that staff. Let's get in. Touchdown. In there? They gave it to him. I thought he's a little bit short, but your far side official raised his hands for a touchdown. No, he got the signal from the umpire. Did he? Yeah. Okay, so the comments are on the board. 149 to go in the uh, you know, we we've dealt with this with some of our other opponents, you know, some some backdoor scoring and stuff, and you know, everyone do your program however you want, but you know, these kids standing over here for, for Dixon come to practice every day too. And uh, you know, deserve some deserve some reps. Interesting, I see the comments. They take their PAT at about the nine yard line. It's a good way to get a block. So chart the comments after a long run by Carter and then he punches it in from the two yard line after a great effort by Carter Counts to to run him down from the back side. You know, like you said, Coach, very indicative of, of what we do here. It doesn't matter what the score is or where we're playing. Let's go get them. 
So Comets will kick off. 149 to go here in the third quarter. Chargers up 50 to seven. What, what do you say, Coach? I, I think Clark probably has, what, 150 in a TD now? He's had a really good night. Yeah, we need spotters and stuff, don't we, giving us stats. I I do I do like it for him based on the night he's had. He's able to get a little pay dirt at the end of it. Yeah, he's, he's, he's a great player, you know. He's, a, he's only a junior, right? That's a great question. I'll tell you I one think second. he's a junior. Yeah, you're correct. Yeah. Ah, Jalen Clark, Jr. Yeah, he's had a great game. I mean, I, I don't know for sure, but you never know. They may kick an onside. Kick that one out of bounds, so the uh, <laughs> Chargers will take it on the 35. Yeah, Tyler Mozingo is the kicker, number 18. Let's see who we bring out here. Looks like most of the starters yes, on the O line, and we got a couple. I see a couple uh, reserves coming in though. Walker Nelson is going to come in. Yeah, that quarterback. Mm-hmm. Then we'll probably sub out some of those old linemen as we go here during yeah. this series, you might think. But yeah, some younger guys getting some run. Jack Whitworth getting in here at receiver, number 88, which I believe is Porter England getting in here at receiver. And that is, is that Walker at QB? Yeah, it is. Hillman in there, the fullback. Is that my man, Bladen? Bladen Let's is. go. You're not catching him. You're not catching Bladen Vogel. To the left side again. Bladen Vogel on the 55-yard run. I not there was a late flag. It looked like late blindside on on uh, the the Comets. I'm not. There's, the Heritage yeah. Hall didn't do a thing. It looked like Klein Rue just running along with the play and got knocked down, which I didn't think that was even a penalty. I don't know what I don't know what he's throwing. Yeah, he called it on. He called it on Dixon. We're going to decline that, obviously. That left gap over there between I want to say Eddie and Charlie, maybe. Is that who our left guard and tackle are? Has been fantastically open for all of these touchdown runs. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they found something over there. Yeah, you get Bladen Vogel, man. They ain't catching him either. He was a member of the 2022 Heritage Hall State Champion 4 by one team as our third leg. Was not a part of the relay last year because of injury. Nice conversion there into the win by Cal Welker. 57 on the board for the Chargers. Still a whole quarter left to play. Quick answer from the Chargers, not that they necessarily needed it, but good for Blake and Vogel, good for the blockers up front. As you said, I think as you move into the fourth quarter, you're gonna watch the linemen start being substituted out. And and as you said earlier, that, that is a massive key to this team is that line. So get them good run, get them some third quarter shape and, and get them on out of there. Yeah, I agree. You know, it's... We, I've never seen a group that, you know, first of all, that has as many blowouts as we do. And, you know, as much as sometimes folks might tend to be critical of Heritage Hall, um, you cannot, and I've talked to a lot of my old coaching buddies around the state, you cannot be critical of how the Chargers handle these games. I've had several guys call me or come to me after games and say, you know, appreciate how they handled it, and that's a, that's a tribute to Coach Bogert and understanding you know, what's important, one, everybody trying to get some reps, and two, having some, you know, sportsmanship, and, and what good does it do to, to embarrass people? Um, you know, you're going to keep running plays, but we're never going to, you know, you see these scores every once in a while, 81 nothing and silly stuff like that. Right. We will never do that. 
Bo Butler set to kick from the 50 after the penalty. It should have been a, a 15 yarder, but only 10 was marked off. So gonna kick it from midfield. Missed that one a little, a little bit of a shanker, but to the 20 nonetheless and no return. Great job there. Your one benefit when you kick the ball like that, it goes to a guy who's not used to getting the ball, right? Well, probably, it's an up back. That's Graham Murphy and Gerard on that tackle, looked like. Mm -hmm. We'll do our best to, to get everybody's tackles yes, sir. notified here as we go forward. Looks like same group up front, Rhett Davis, Gray got, Keller. Got Micah Brown coming in at linebacker for Still got Graham Murphy in. Yeah. Got Carter Knowles in here at the backup corner position and Boston Fuller. Yeah, Carter mentioned he was going to play some corner. We got Tegan Lawson, the young freshman here at safety. Hey, good lick right there. That's Helen Brown looks like. Helen Brown, Kyle Welker. And that was that was David Griffin there. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. that was David that blew Fantastic. in there from that mic. Uh, and that's Gray Keller there in the nose, right? You already yes, said that. Yes, yes. You know, Hillman can fill out a uniform. I, he's a junior. Look for some good things out of him going forward. You do, and, and I'll tell you, he knows his role on our basketball team, and it's nothing short of go be physical, Hillman. Yeah, he's a big kid. So we got we got our starting five man out here at corner and our backup five man at DN. <laughs> There's not a lot of starting five man corners around the country. <laughs> Inside handoff to Casas again. Kyle Welker first to hit him, then a gang of Chargers. David Griffin at the bottom of that pile again. Yep. And Carter Knowles. You know, okay, 57 to seven. And we do not have a starter on defense in the game. So it's going to end the third quarter. 57-7, your score through three. We'll be back with the final frame here from Dixon, Oklahoma. Injuries don't wait for business hours. Now you can be seen 24-7 for sports injuries. Whether you have a sprain or a broken bone at the SSM Health Bone and Joint Injury Clinic at 13401 Northwestern. Welcome back, Chargers. Is that we're got three in the books here in Dixon? Uh, as you can see, Chargers cruising 57 to seven. I'm gonna read from one of our sponsors, Hampton Aesthetics, OKC's leading medical spa, offering beauty your way with all the latest non-surgical aesthetic treatments. Visit them at beautyyourwayok.com to schedule your appointment today. Shout out to. Alex Broussard, one of my Pledge Brothers' wives, on that sponsorship. Thank you, Alex. There's a, another run to Carter. I mean, to uh, I keep calling him Carter. Clark. 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 Yes, sir. Jalen Clark. Seven, eight yards there. You know. I just there's <laughs> there's 30 kids down here for Dixon that like to get in the game, and, and they keep running our. You know, and again, that's their prerogative, but. It's also ours to say that that's not really the idea here. We have subbed out our entire unit. And uh, good job, Griffin. Gray Keller. First down carry there for Byers. You know, and Hillman on the bottom of that pile as well. So good job by those fellas right there. The amount of times in limited action that you've mentioned Griffin's name, he's yeah. playing the middle pretty well there, seems like. Well, you know, Ben and David 
and Cal before he got hurt. Hopefully not serious. Pretty good three group group of three guys at that Mike Backer. That's that's two men in motion. That's illegal. <laughs> As we watch Carter Knowles push quarterback Paulson out of bounds, just got an update. Sulphur defeats Lone Grove 41 to nothing tonight. Sulphur continuing to play good football. They are. Yeah, they've, they've pretty much mailed it in here. They're not going to call anything. Both of those backs almost ran into each other before the snap. You cannot have two people in motion at the start of us before the snap, or at the snap. <laughs> Five finally out of the game. Still got Byers in there. There's another kid. Number, Number 10. 10. Sorry, fans, the wind is quite special here. Number 10 is Kobe Hillis, a junior running back. That was Parker England yeah, po oh, on the tackle. Radio, yeah, Porter England. Porter, Porter England, I, I misread it. I'm no sorry, worries. Porter. We're, we're in a dark, dark area with a lot of wind going on, so we'll do our best to get get the names of our reserves and those reserves. We'll be worse concerned with ours. Well, he's back in there. Byers. Byers. Got number 19, Walker Weddle, freshman. First contact there by Walker. Good job. Coaching staff's talked a lot about Walker even since the summer. Uh, very talented, came in, played a little bit of quarterback. Okay. Um, but they've moved him to running back and linebacker. Been very impressed with what he's able to do. Really good athlete. Look for uh, look for number 19, Walker Waddell, to be uh, a contributor as he moves forward in his career. Great job there. It's like Griffin and Dave, Rhett yeah. Davis. David Griffin and Rhett and and Gray all in on that one. You know, Gray just keeps playing, keeps battling in there, getting bigger and stronger with every lineman every single day, working his his tail off to get the opportunity to get in there and be able to make some plays. Just getting word that Paul's Valley defeats Plainview 34 to 14. Yeah, and that's our next week's opponent, so plain view. Look at that, they try. <laughs> it's supposed to be a reverse. Had Kyle Welker first to meet him. Hillman. Micah Brown in there. And Walker Waddell again. Yeah. Third and nine now for the Comets. Clock winding, eight minutes and counting. For those freshmen to be in there, Coach, uh, the second unit, pretty pretty big statement, right? Walker Waddell. Absolutely. Porter England and Tegan Lawson. Lawson. Yeah. Tegan's a quarterback, right? He is. Out here at safety. Oh, great effort there by Griffin. Again, like you said earlier, that's a tackle in a year he's making. Yeah. 19, Walker Waddell there to finish it off. So fourth and a long one here. See what the uh, buyer's coming out, but Clark's still Clark there. is staying in. Let's see if we can stop him here. That'd be great for these guys. God, wouldn't it? I to get these guys to a fourth down is an accomplishment in itself, but let's not lean on moral victories. Let's get it done. So there's the unbalanced look. Direct snap to Clark. He didn't get it by much. Oh, really saw a tackle out there. Is that Boston Fuller? And Griffin. Yeah. David Griffin, Boston Fuller combined for that tackle on the outside. Solid tackle by Boston Fuller. Yeah, that's a size mismatch, my gosh. That guy's number five is big. Clock running. Uh, first and 10 for the Comets on the Charger 32 yard line.
There they finally brought him off. Byers and Carter have come off. There's the inside handoff, which they've done. Good job there. By, is that Hillman? I think it was. Yep, Hillman Brown. On the solo in there. Way to stay home. Tackles Dylan Gleason for the Comets. So just a small pickup there brings up second nine for the Comets here as we get into six minutes to go here in the final frame here in Dixon, Oklahoma. As they huddle real quick, Charter Vision would like to thank Hayes Legal Solutions for their support. Hayes Legal Solutions primarily handles high net worth divorces, real estate, renewable energy lease negotiations, and estate planning. Okay, conveniently in Gallardia Parkway, give them a call at 405-635-5578. Nice. Griffin again, coach. Griffin and Klein Reuter right there. Griffin put him in reverse. Tackle on number 20, Xander Schreiber for the comments. Hey, shout out to these JV guys. They put it on the Mustang JV guys, 28 to nothing on Tuesday, on Monday. Beautiful. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah, 20, I think 28 or 34. I think it was 34. Yeah, 34 nothing over the Mustang JV, which is a little different than some of the JVs we play. No small feat there. Inside handoff there, hard to see. Looks like Waddell tripped him up first again. Okay, we got another fourth and one here. Looks like we lost our clock down our scoreboard. Yeah, we, we, we still are. We, yeah. So we're right at four and a half minutes left in this ball game. Okay, let's go, fellas. Stop them here on fourth and one. Oh! Yeah. Welker on the in on the tack along with Rhett Davis, but they do pick it up. Okay, and get the two to the Charger 20-yard line, first and ten for the Comets as we roll towards four minutes here left to play on this windy evening in Dixon, Oklahoma. Striver on that carry again. Again, while they take time to huddle, read another sponsorship for you. It's never acceptable to send text messages when operating a motor vehicle. Stay focused at all times. The message can wait. Do not text and drive. <laughs> Thanks to our sponsor, Farmers Insurance Agent Brandon Payne, for bringing these important safety messages to our school. Inside handoff there. And is that Gray? Let's go. Yeah, Gray, Keller. Gray Keller on the law. TL for a loss. Takes down Dylan Gleason again, a sophomore running back. Great play by yeah. Greg Keller for that nose tackle position. TFL, nice job. So second, about 14 now for the Comets after that loss. As we wind towards three minutes to play, 314 and counting here in the fourth quarter. Gonna roll out and try to throw it. Oh, poor Reed oh. just missed it. Gleason on the reception. England barely just outside of his fingertips, coach. Yeah, looks like it's gonna be about four. Yeah, it's fourth, third down and about four, yeah. I couldn't tell where, he, where they marked it. They never know. <laughs> Not to leave them out. Make sure we are shopping at Car Charger Corner for all the latest Charger gear. Did you know that all profits go directly to classroom programs like Charger Vision? Show your Charger pride with great gear and support our students in Richmond. It's open from 8.15 to 4 on school days. Please follow it at the, hard, at the Hall Charger Corner on Insta. Find products and specials. Yeah. Looks like a first down. Any number? 
down towards two minutes and the Comets look to punch it in to finish the game off. Our Chargers look for a stand inside the 10 yard line. Coach Charger gonna head down to the field to meet our player of the game for an interview as we move to the end of this game. Paulson takes, doesn't take the snap. Two fakes and a bootleg on the outside. Chargers play it well. And a beautiful open field tackle by Boston Fuller on the outside, knocking the Comets back behind the 10 yard line down to the, looks like the 12 yard line as we roll down under a minute 30. As the Comets huddle for this next third down goal play, the fall review is going to hit, going to be another hit. The theme is storytellers featuring songs with strong narratives that each tell their own tale. Some classic rock, some country, and obligatory Taylor Swift tribute. More on that in a moment. Paul just takes a snap, hands inside to Gleason, who runs up down up the middle. First contact made by Hillman Brown, helped out by Rhett Davis, and looks like Gray Keller. Back to the review, HHPA is creating a bit more of a festival atmosphere by trading our regular venue for an in-the-round stage in the Reynolds Common. It will be a completely different experience and when paired with fantastic fall theme concessions from our Booster Club, should make for the perfect October evening with Charger friends and family. As if that wasn't enough, the concert will feature two faculty performances. The show plays one night only tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Get your tickets now at heritagehall.com slash tickets. Paulson rolled out to the right, pressured by Rhett Davis to throw to the end zone for Gleason off his hands and incomplete. They had Cal Welker and Porter England on the coverage, assisted by Tegan Lawson. And with 11 seconds left in the game, the Chargers forced a turnover on downs. Shout out to our JV and second teamers there standing strong keeping the comments out of the end zone even while they had several starters in the game for most of that drive. Hudson Ferris and the Chargers take the field likely for a victory formation to end this game. 11 seconds left and Ferris will take the snap, take a knee and that will do it for tonight from Dixon, Oklahoma as the clock rounds below five seconds and now to zero. Your final score in Dixon, Chargers 57, the Dixon Comets 7. We'll be back in just a moment with player of the game features and on the field interview with our player. Oklahoma City. I'm Miles Perry, and I want you to tune into my show, Super Prep Live. Super Prep Live takes an in-depth look at the Oklahoma high school student athlete and what makes he or she become great at what they do. Super Prep Live can be heard on OKC's CBS Sports Radio 105.3 and Instagram Live. Make sure you tune in and learn about the next great student athlete on Super Prep Live with me, Miles Perry. <laughs> Dead People Stuff grew out of our love of historic preservation and architectural salvage of building materials. Whether you're looking for doors, light fixtures, hardware, reclaimed lumber, statues, plants, or home decor, Dead People Stuff is the perfect piece for your next project. And the Dead People Stuff family is growing. Come check out our 40,000 square foot compound featuring a brewery, barbecue, tattoo shop, barber shop, and a cat cafe. We pay you cash to haul off your trash. Help us save history one piece at a time. Back here in Dixon, Oklahoma, again, our final tonight, your Heritage Hall Chargers 57 and the Dixon Comets 7. Uh, at halftime, the score was 29 to nothing, Heritage Hall. Solid first half, uh, gashed a few times in the run game here and there. Uh, but again, as we said on the broadcast, yards are just yards if they don't lead to points. And that's a lot of what happened 
for Dixon tonight. Between the 30s, they move the ball decently, uh, especially in the inside run game. But the Chargers stood up outside of the 30s, uh, namely in their own end, keeping Dixon for the most part out of the red zone until late in the third quarter when they were able to punch in a touchdown as the Chargers had subbed in some reserves. Great game from number five, Clark. Had to have had around 150 rushing yards and a score. Not quite as much as the Chargers had on the ground with Barrett Travis having three carries of over 55 yards and a total of four rushing touchdowns, a two-point conversion, and a passing touchdown to throw on top of it. The Chargers will be, as Coach Chart said earlier, will be in action again down in this area at Plainview next week on Friday. So we're getting off of the string of Thursday night games for the Chargers, heading to toward a traditional Friday evening game. Again, the Chargers come in, take care of business, do what many think they should have been able to do tonight, and at the same time, face a little bit of rush defense adversity, which is fantastic for these coaches to have on film. They're going to be able to go back and review, see where they're getting hit, where they're getting cut on the inside, on those inside runs by Clark and um, number seven as well for the Comets. And we'll get to see where the Chargers can kind of sew some things up, clean some things up on their defensive line. We got to see them play their forefront a little bit tonight. It's a nice little wrinkle that Coach Adams has thrown in for our, our traditional 3-3-5 stack defense. And it'll be interesting to see as the, how that works going forward against some of the run heavy teams that the Chargers look to play against. As Coach Chard said, to be a one dimensional team, it's gonna be very difficult to come in and really truly compete with the Chargers. Uh, you're gonna have to have an opponent that can both run and pass the ball, but Dixon offered some insight into some things that are going to possibly give the Chargers a little bit of trouble down the road and things that they can now, after week six going into week seven, excuse me, week seven going into week eight, can look to fix as they move forward and not allow anymore. As we mentioned on the broadcast, Dixon runs a little bit of formation that not many teams are going to run. It's not exactly one that a team's going to pick up and be able to run just off the bat after a week of practice. That being said, as we've mentioned, some holes that the Chargers are going to be able to look at film and work to fill and get better as they move through the season, just as they usually do. Right now, we're waiting for our field crew with Coach Steelman and Coach Chard and our player of the game, Barrett Travis as they walk over to get set up. Again, Barrett Travis with a phenomenal game on the ground tonight. Um, we'll throw it down to Coach Chard and our on the field interview with our play of the game, Barrett Travis. Charger fans here with player of the game, Barrett Travis. Barrett uh, had to you know, I'm not a numbers guy. They, I was told there'd be no math, right? No, I talked to Coach Perry. We got you for five rushing touchdowns, one passing touchdown to Andy uh, on a fun deal tonight, and upwards of 200 yards rushing. Um, it was great to see, you know, I was talking, you know, inevitably on a team like this with a guy like Andy going to OU, yeah. we're going to hear a lot about Andy. What makes us hard to defend is having a guy like you at tailback, and I think they you gave some film tonight for people like, oh my gosh, we haven't seen that guy bust out yet, and we did tonight. What do you think of tonight? Well, first off, it was all the O-line. I mean, they blocked wonderfully. I mean, that's the best blocking they've done all year. I wasn't touched on any of my runs, and they just did a phenomenal job. Well, the good news there and why you're running tailback is nobody caught you either, did they? No. And uh, Coach Sullivan, I was doing the game with him tonight, he was bragging how, you know, you got in a little track action last spring and, and they helped you. I know you do some soccer too and uh, typical multi-sport star here at Heritage Hall, which we count on. Uh, Barrett, what what is the, the secret for your team keeping focused these last three, two, three weeks when you know deep down, you're not chilling, you, kitchens can't fool you, you know the kind of opponent you have. But I, I think I heard Coach Boger say something about it's not the opponent, it's the standard. What, what would you say to that? Well, we just have a championship standard here at Heritage Hall, and we just worked on ourselves the past couple weeks, and we know that we're not playing the best teams, but we got to focus on ourselves for mm -hmm. teams later down the road like Marlowe and Sulphur, mm -hmm. and when we get into playoffs. So we just got to keep preparing and getting better each week. Well, it was a heck of an effort, and, you know, I know you, I see you guys every day, and I, I love how hard you work. And this whole team works. The summer was great, and it's one of Coach G. Coach KG told me it's one of the best summers we've had, and you know that's going to pay off for you here in the next four or five weeks. And 
hopefully get to that other big game again sometime in December. Yeah. Congratulations, Barrett, our Thank player of the game. Barrett Travis, 57-7, Chargers win it in Dixon, Oklahoma. We'll be back here about 10 miles back to the west at Plainview, Oklahoma next week on the road for week eight. Steve Chart signing off, 57-7, Chargers win it.